What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Now, speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of the people who do support me on Patreon. So, shout out to Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, David Wayne Foster, uh, Edwin Johnson, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Jeronism, Kirsten Smith, Life is Short, Matt, Michael, Page, Guitar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Sweet Equity, Texas Mike, The Flat Earth Channel.com, and Tina Baker. Massive thanks to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. And we are joined by quite a few people in both uh, Discord and Google Plus, so a very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Pre-Show. Good to be here. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, hello. So who have we got in Discord? Does anybody need taking off mic? Mr. Giggles, hello. Taking off mute. Hello, Mr. Giggles. What else have we got? Something sin. Mor hello. Hello, hello. Hey, hello. good morning, Nathan. Good morning, good morning. Gotta keep a close eye on my PC today. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of adding yet another fan. So five years ago, I built this PC to be completely passive. There's no, there's no fans in it. That's a lie. There is fans, but they're just not on. So typically, the PC runs without any fans. Now, adding 4K to the system so I can monitor more things at once has meant the CPU is working a hell of a lot harder. And the passive CPU caller, yeah, it can just about do it. I put a little video on Patreon showing me like testing it with ab absolutely everything running and the monitoring software and it's like running at 99 degrees <laughs> you're like Jesus it's so hot <laughs> I just I just thought of the the old Volkswagens that were air cooled right they didn't have fans oh, they didn't have water you mean they did have fans that yeah, there was no water pumping around yeah. it yeah exactly I'm sorry Yeah, this is this is it, this is similar in a way because you can water cool PCs, but you know I wanted none of that. I didn't want any motors or fans. You know, and it's weird because I did that five years ago, and I'm, I'm reasonably reasonably well versed for building PCs. My folks used to run a shop that sold PCs, so you know, from about the age of five, I was screwing in memory and stuff. But nevertheless, I, I, I think I'm well versed with building what I think is a good PC. And at the time, I was like, I want it to be passive. I don't want it to make any noise. Not because I was going to do a show, but because it was actually intended to be a home theatre PC and it sat right next to me. So I'm like, I don't want it to make a sound when there's a movie playing. If there's a quiet scene and you're, you know, a horror movie for whatever, whatever, you know, horror movie is a good example. The tension's building because it's quiet. And all you can do is... <laughs> it kind of ruins the mood. So that was the original purpose. And it's, it's interesting because... I thought, well, I'll spec it as as good as it can possibly be. In other words, I bought the best graphics card on the market at the time. It was the best one you could buy. Same with the processor before going up to sort of server grade stuff. It was the best domestic um, chip you could buy. I thought that'll mean it'll last a long time. Well, now five years later, the capabilities of stuff like monitors, although there was 4K that at that time, um, have, have moved on a bit to the point where I can afford it more likely <laughs> but anyway and suddenly the PC's right at the upper edge of what it can do and you think wow don't PCs move on so fast you know, you, what, you, your top of the range five year old PC is now <laughs> struggling to keep up with just doing a live stream <laughs> five years later yeah it's it's hard it's hard to find electronic equipment that doesn't make noise you know when it's just no one's talking Oh, that was that was going to be what I was going to add. So Apple have just bought out their PC. I, welcome to What's My PC. Um, so Apple have bought out their new Pro PC, and it's 
it's passive. You know, they've got it all passive. And I was like, isn't that interesting? You know, that was that was basically what I was going for when I built this one. That said, that theirs is you know absolutely no fans in it. Not even fans that can come on should it should there be an emergency. Yeah. Well, what were my emergency fans? You know, if they come on, I know something's wrong. Um, well, they were just on. Doesn't they're just they on. heat up? They're just on all the time. It's just like, and hence me changing some of them because then you realise that the emergency fans, the ones that indicate something could be wrong, are, are noisier. How than, do they ventilate the heat? Yeah, just blow it out of the case. Just a fan. But yeah. No, I know, but the, uh, the Apple you said is passive and it doesn't have any fans. Just convection. It just goes up. Oh, okay. Just, just goes. Out, just, right? Yeah, just it's it's manufactured in such a way to just dissipate the heat naturally by natural convection. So it's just going to chuck the heat out the top of it. So are the vents no longer underneath the computer, but on the sides? Yeah, there is a load of fa fa uh, like if they call it the cheese grater, the latest one, because it looks like a cheese grater. It's got great big holes all the way up the sides and down the bottom, and you know, it's a it's a uh -huh. fairly intricate design case, but. You know that really appeals to me. That sort of engineering, you're like, yeah, that's cool. The fact that it can run a, you know, very high powered PC completely passive, never ever having any fans turn on, which certainly mine was not, um, is is pretty pretty outstanding. Yeah, they want a pretty penny for it though, but I'm pretty sure with mm. a, a little bit of effort, you could you could do the same thing today, if you were so inclined. You could build yourself a passive PC. Yeah, I have to go take a look at that. Not that mine is anymore. That's why I'm babbling on about it. <laughs> I'm just I'm gutted. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to my PC. <laughs> yeah, <Sure>. that's it. <laughs> I'm just glad it can do it. You know, the fact that it's not completely passive anymore. The fans that I have put in now, are, you can't hear them. You know, it is actually still silent. So that's that's all that matters. Um, so, you know, you can't... It's running now, obviously. We're recording. Um, and I can't hear a thing from it, even though it's 60. My right ear. What, uh, what PC do you have, Nathan? Just one I built. I don't know. You couldn't really call it anything. The case is a cooler master. The motherboard's a Asus. Um, the graphics cards are an Asus. The chips are an Intel. Right, right. The the new cheese grater Mac uh, that has fans though. Um, is this that they sort of engineered it in a way so that you don't have like a separate fan here and separate fan there. It, it does have a few fans, but it's supposed to sort of combine the. Uh, the CPU heat and the GPU heat into one sort of airflow, but it but it still has fans, I believe. Oh, I knew it. See, that was uh, there. We go. That's my ignorance. So I'd, I'd taken a cursory glance or watched a few reviewers t talking about it, and it, it seemed to me like it was entirely passive. And I remember thinking at the time, <laughs> well, when when I wanted to do that, I still had to put some fans in somewhere. You know, even if they only came on occasionally. You know, generally it's passive, but you know, you render a video, you can be damn sure that fan's going to come on at some point. Um, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, because it's got a Geon processor and Vega graphics card, so those are all pretty, yeah, pretty chunky. Yeah, I think well, the that, last that... real passive power thing they did was, um, I think the G4 Cube, but that was like 20 years ago now. <laughs> that was also passive, was it? I think the Power Mac G4, it was the Cube thing. Um, like a glass sort of cube cube thing. Yeah, did it have and like... that didn't have any fans. Okay, the thing with weird plasticky looking handles on the top of it. Uh, no, that was the the Power Mac that had the, the plastic handles, but there was also... It was called a Power Mac, but it was just like a much smaller cube um, sort of thing. I've, I've vague, I vague, I have a vague G4 recollection G4 of it. Yeah. I, I kind of know what you're talking about vaguely, but that was passive. I like, I like passive stuff. I mean, I just think it's cool if you can do it without having any noise. There shouldn't be any requirement, but the problem is obviously everyone's technical requirements go up as time progresses. You want the PC to do more and more things. You know, I, I especially, and you know, I not only want it to do more actual things i wanted to do it all at once you know i want to run every piece of software and have it all monitorable which is hence why the pc is working that much harder now because it's it makes your life easier right if you've got every single functional piece of pc tech on your screen working it's like well you can look at it all at a glance but obviously that requires quite a lot of power to do so yeah that one's hard to do fully passive pulling um but uh but you can get you know 
maybe a bit of liquid cooling and, and sort of those bigger fans that you can run a bit slower. So it, it's less noisy than just pure air cooling. But the graphics cards tend to be quite noisy though, but that's only probably during rendering. If you're doing most of your work on CPU, then you could sort of liquid cool the CPU and have some slower running fans around the radiator. But this is where you're topic now, <laughs> discussing PC. Well, that, that's basically what I've done. The, the, the graphics card, I've set, set it up such that even when it's at 65 degrees, the fans don't come on. So I'm not gaming on it, so the ah, graphics okay, card yeah. it just sits hot. I don't care, you know, some people are running their graphics card at 80 degrees, so who cares? I'm not running it hard, it just happens to be warmer than it would be at most people's idle. But it is doing something, you know, obviously. Um, but yeah, that just runs hot, passive, and then I've just got a giant fan now that just blows on the passive cooler. Well, it doesn't even blow, it's underneath it, it just injects air into the case with this 20 centimeter fan. And then that obviously puts a bit of fan, a bit of fan flow past in a general way, the cooler. What I'm toying with the idea is just buying a, a smaller fan, like a 120 millimeter fan, which you can attach to the cooler. You know, it did have a um, an option to add fans if you had something that was more powerful. And it's like ca capable of dealing with like 80 watts, and the chip's 88 watts. So it's like, uh, it's just, and that's what shows. You know, it's right on the limits at 99 degrees. So it's like, okay, so it's just slightly beyond the capabilities of the cooler to just stay passive forever. So it might be that I'll just stick a fan on it in case something desperately goes wrong. But at the moment, I'm just going to monitor it for the next, you know, three or four days. If anyone's watching this thinking, this is totally unrelated to Flat Earth Debate. Well, no, it's not. It is related because this is this is me talking about how I keep the show flowing and running. And obviously, if I'm not keeping an eye on these things and suddenly the show just stops, and then that's the end of the show for that day until I spend a week figuring out what the hell went wrong, I'd rather just keep on an eye on it and make sure that, you know, we... It's only getting discussed in the pre-show rather than in the middle of a debate when something goes wrong and I lose all sound or whatever. You know, that's what these pre-shows are for. For those not technically inclined, yeah, yeah. it's going to be boring. Tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> the um, generally though, the CPU running above a 85 degree is, is not recommended. 85 degree Celsius is probably the the limit you should set. So it's a bit it's a bit risky going above that, especially for long periods of time. <laughs> No, I completely agree. I mean, when I say it's at 99, what I mean by that is whoever's rustling, can you just go on mute, 10th man? Um, yeah, I will. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's, the spikes are at 99. So if it's not thermally throttling, which is why I'm like not immediately just doing something about it. You know, 100 degrees, it throttles. So I now understand. Ah, so okay. it's spiking at 99. So generally, it's not getting above, say, 89. But like you say, really, you want it to be at 85 so that the spikes are at about 95. Well, that means you're getting, you know, you've got a five degree bit of legroom. So if you suddenly added three more programs accidentally, if I pressed three buttons on the stream deck and loaded three programs when that was happening, you could potentially push it into thermal throttling, which it's not the end of the world. Modern chips protect themselves, but it would obviously slow everything right down and that could cause issues. Well, I don't want that to happen. It, you know, I just want the show to run smoothly. And, you know, at the moment, just recording, it's like 78 degrees. <laughs> You're like, shit. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. Not yet until I start streaming. There's also undervolting. So if you, you, for Intel and even AMD, sometimes by default, they give a bit too much voltage. I mean, it's still a safe voltage, but if you turn the voltage down like 0.1, I mean, you've got to look it up, but if you turn it down slightly, it reduces the heat quite a bit. I used to do that on my laptop to reduce the laptop heat. Oh, the, oh. the CPU can still function, yeah. Oh, no, I totally get what you're saying. So the silicon still functions, yeah. No, no, yeah, I get what you're saying, but it, it, maybe I should have said that first. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this whilst severely overclocking the CPU. Obviously, I still want the free performance. <laughs> so, you know, I've gone to the effort oh, right, of getting right. the voltages <laughs> right and still getting... I mean, at, at peak, it'll get... When I first got the chip, I got it on air, no fan, to go up to 4.8... And I was so chuffed, but it didn't last long. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. absolutely... Just look, you know, these chips, they're silicon. It depends how... Just look at the draw, right? How good is your silicon? Well, I remember at the time, like I say, I was going... I wasn't particularly going for an overclock. I'm going to do it anyway, but I wasn't doing it... I just wanted the free performance, like anybody. Um, but I wanted to do it on air, and I didn't care if I ended up having to underclock to achieve what I wanted, i.e. silence. But it just amused me <laughs> that there was people going out spending literally a thousand dollars on cases and uh, custom water cooling loops and all this sort of stuff, right? And they were getting less of an overclock than me 
without even having a fan on the CPU. And I was just like, I, I, just luck, you know, I just ended up with a good chip. Um, but, you know, after about a month of, you know, trying to push it further because you get greedy and you're like, wow, this is a good chip. I wonder how far I can push it. I did something more than I should have and I ended up never getting beyond 4.7 after that, which is where it sat from oh, until right. now. <laughs> So that's where it sat, but completely stable at four point yeah. seven, which is absolutely astonishing considering the chip's only supposed to do four. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. What chip is it? What's the model? What's the model of the chip? Is it a seven six hundred K or something? Four seven nine oh K. Ah, okay. Everyone watching this is now. I've probably lost <laughs> half the pre show audience just with this one conversation. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> Actually, my my rustling noise was I was looking for these fans that I ordered that are USB driven, very quiet, and it was for my cigar case because I needed airflow in there, and I had ordered these other fans and were making too much noise, so I did some research and I got these USB smaller fans, and they don't make hardly any noise if at all, uh, but they just weren't powerful enough. Uh, but I bet if you put a few of them together. It would just suck that heat out of there and not be noisy. I'll see if I can find it. I'll send it to you. Oh, I've got a recommendation if you if you're still struggling yeah, to find one. <laughs> Noctua, Noctua do a USB fan. It's the same as their PC fans. Really over engineered, expensive, but like thirty dollars for a fan. It's stupidly expensive, but nevertheless, um, they've got a version of their fans that now run on USB. Super, super quiet. Very powerful. Anyway, Noctua. Yeah, this kind of stuff is like a car modification. So I never got into cars, but yeah, I've been up and on every few years getting into the overclocking and the cases and all that. And it just, it just never stops. <laughs> I like it when and you really get carried away with tweaking definitely. and changing the, components. The, the, guy does the, much money, eh? the guy does the web designing for me. I was going to a similar conversation with him. And I was like, well, what do you use? And he explained that he's, he's like fully all water cooled, but that's not that exciting. But then he explained that he's got a Hackintosh. I was like, whoa. Now that's like, whoa. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the next level. <laughs> that is next level. I mean, this guy's obviously, you know, he's a, he's a webmaster, so he's, you, you can imagine. But, oh, you got, you got um, to explain what that meant. I don't even know what you Hackintosh, Hackintosh is, that? basically, you can use the Mac operating system if you are extremely skilled at working your way around um, BIOS and the internal mechanisms that the PC operates under, you've got to, you've got to know your way around them in order to make a essentially standard component PC, something you would build like I've just built. I could I could make this PC into a Mac. I couldn't, <laughs> but, but somebody could. Um, and then you use the Mac operating system on essentially PC grade components rather than paying through the nose to get theirs. Now it's called Hackintosh because obviously you're having to hack stuff to do it. And you know that's like I say that's that's for the more skilled than I, <laughs> far more skilled than I. But yeah, content producers, Max are the best. You know, Max are brilliant. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the graphics on the graphics card side, you know, there's always been a lot of overclocking and enthusiasm around that kind of stuff for games. But with all the Ethereum mining and Bitcoin mining and whatever coin mining, that's when they really went in and started tweaking everything like crazy. And you had custom graphics biases and you know undervolting to you know make it as efficient as possible, overclocking the memory, underclocking the core. Uh, yeah, I was into that for a while. Just made a bit enough to buy like a nice gaming headphone from the mining, but after that, it was <laughs> not worth all the trouble using it on all day. And the heat, like, you gotta, like the heat yeah, it generates the heat is and using electricity. Yeah, and the electricity bills. But I mean, that's obviously going to be factored in when you're calculating how, how it's going to work out in terms of the end result, profit-wise. But the heat—that's something that you've got to, just got to contend with, right? I mean, if you're in a cold country, it's not too bad if you've got some a way to sort of like ventilate it out of the room. So, right. Um, but yeah, if you're in like equatorial zones or during summer, then that's a real problem because everything's just roasting there and roasting the room and roasting the components. Not 
not the best. <laughs> And they made specific GPUs, didn't they? Just for bit, just for mining. And it's like, well, what if well, now the phase is or the craze is over? What are you going to do with that? I, I did see a, a Linus Tech Tips video where they were explaining how you could utilize the like onboard graphics outputs and still use the GPU, a mining GPU, to to do some you know useful with, not useful, but you know practical in the home, maybe gaming or whatever, rendering, Blender, whatever, but. It's, it's doable with a lot of fuss, but it's back to like being a, a Hackintosh user. You know, you've got to know what you're doing to do that. It's not like you could just stick it on eBay and say, here's my mining GTX 980. Go, How much will you give me for it? It's probably not worth 20 quid. Uh, I think they still go for, for something. They're not totally worthless. It's just the person that's buying has to take the risk because there's two kinds. The specific mining kind cards are the ones that it's a graphics card that they removed all the the video output right right but a lot of people uh even you know serious enthusiasts um just got the regular video cards because they couldn't be bothered waiting for you know the specialized cards so they just went in and bought up like all the stock of the cards that were yeah. for just normal put the price to the roof that, so i remember everyone moaning yeah. about it so because basically all the stock went you know, you're absolutely right. Everyone bought yeah, up standard I, I, graphics cards. Yeah. So the prices just went because they, they didn't have any. Yeah, that was a, that was a dark time for gaming. <laughs> the dark days of the dark ages of gaming. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, I remember it well. I, I, yeah. It was about just after I'd got all this PC. It took me about six to eight months to build this just through financial restraints you know you buy a bit at a time you get your pc built piecemeal using old bits from old pcs and then replacing them well at least that's what i did because i'm poor um but at the end of the process I'd, I'd got it all i was happy it was you know cost me what i thought was a, a, a fair amount of money but still i felt like a good, good value and then like literally six months later memory just went bonkers you're like whoa why is it so expensive you know, don't get me wrong, they'd had a slight change, DDR3 to 4, and you know, but who cares? It's still just memory. <laughs> you know, it's not suddenly worth double what it was six months ago, but it was. And I thought, well, I'd, after knowing how much I'd used the memory and having a couple of little niggles with memory, um, I thought, well, I don't, I'm only using 16 gig of the 32 gig kit that I bought. Let's flog it. And I made a profit on it. <laughs> Solved my memory second and I made a profit on it. Cause I've never, ever, ever had that with any PC component ever. When do you ever buy something? for a PC, sell it later on second hand and make money on it. That does not happen. You bought at the right yeah, time. Basically graphics cards as well. Those who bought before the craze really hit, they were able to, to basically sell their card and then buy a, a newer card for about the same price. So I, d I don't know what they were able to uh, yeah, sell it for higher than when they bought it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know what was going on. There was loads of scamming going on. I ended up buying the graphics card I wanted because I was looking for it obviously at a good price. I wanted it as cheap as you could humanly get it. But I ended up getting literally caught up in two or three scams along the way. I didn't lose any money, but it was just a pain in the ass. And it's like, well, why is everyone scamming graphics cards? And like I say, after the fact, I realised why. There's, it was the very start of the of people buying them all up. So there's scammers out there trying to uh, gather up as much money. Anyway, in the end, I still got it for what I considered to be a good price, like under £500 rather than six or £650, £700. Pounds. But then soon after... I was seeing like what was the special edition Marvelous Besto one that they were released. You know, they'd have the special edition ones that were like seven, eight hundred pounds of exactly the same bloody thing in gold. Um, but that's what the standard ones are going for. You're like seeing them advertised for seven hundred pounds, and you're like, what the hell? What's going on? Yeah, was that a so was that a 1080 Ti or something that you got for 500 pounds? Yeah, at the, at the time it would have been a 980 Ti, but yeah, it's a, the, the same thing okay. happened throughout that period. So yeah, the, the, but the 1080 Ti yeah, is a yeah. slightly different beast, isn't it? Because uh, from memory, they were you had AMD saying how much better their their latest equipment was going to be, and and basically Intel believed them, and and made the 1080 Ti like considerably better than the stuff that went before it. And then you had like the latest generation, which they'd been plugging at the time, like RTX, which I talked about in flat earth terms because RTX was used to prove the moon landings, right? Oh, we've rendered the, the rate, we've done the ray tracing on the moon landing shots and it's definitely real, says NVIDIA <laughs> because of ray tracing technology. But the, the, the RTX cards came out 
and they were like double the price with this new technology but they weren't significantly better than the 1080 ti and that was just purely because they'd, they'd been paying or believed what amd had said so yeah, anybody they also bought... made a mistake with the rtx i think because they were expecting all these games to have you to make use of the ray tracing which it could but it also like cut the frame rate in half so you were getting like essentially the same or worse performance than the 1080 ti with say the 2080 um when you turned like the effects all on so exactly. it's very pretty but you couldn't even really yeah you weren't getting really suddenly you weren't getting gaming rate. performance in terms of frame rates but it looked really pretty which is which is lovely it was kind of similar deal with, with the card I bought in terms of 4K. They were like, it'll do 4K. And you're like, well, not not a playable frame rates. Yeah, it will do 4K. But it, the same with RTX. But the thing I was getting at was the, the jump. If you, bought an, if you bought a 1080, you're basically, like me, set for five years but without any issues because it was just that good considering how much it cost. And there'll be three or, two or three generations before you'll, you know, it'll even be surpassed in any way it'll still be excellent in the, in two years time a 1080 and it wasn't the most expensive card they did so you know that was just like the card that i wish yeah, i bought a, yeah that's the funny thing with tech it's like all the companies basically have all their roadmaps and all their tech lined up they're basically just responding to sort of like market estimations and market movements and what the um you know what the the consumers expect so like you know, why should a phone need like four cameras on it? That's just crazy. But, you know, soon everyone wants going to have that, you know, the back camera, the front camera, the back camera, uh, three cameras, four cameras, whatever, zoom camera. <laughs> so they've got all the tech lined up. It's just really interesting to see how they sort of like measure it out over time. And mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes they get it right and you get good value. Sometimes they get it wrong and you're pay overpaying for, you know, something that's not as valuable. Yeah, you know, you pay... 800 900 pounds for a 1080 ti and then you think oh i, I don't know what i might swap it for the latest one i'll pay what was it 1800 quid or something ludicrous for the rtx equivalent and then it's just it's not better <laughs> it's just like what <laughs> how does that work but yeah like you say they're just they're just changing the technology in accordance with the market that they think is going to be the next year's buyers and if their competitor is going to be or is saying they're going to be much better than they are. They just up the quality slightly, but they did with that particular card. God, this has definitely not been flat earth related, other than mentioning RTX was used to prove moon landings by ray tracing. And shout out to Truth in Your Face, who was on the show yesterday in the uh, in the Discord. He didn't say anything, um, but he, he released a video about the the latest um, simulation of the actual simulation of a moon landing because that didn't happen um and it was exactly the same you know they're saying oh the view from the window wasn't what you got from the camera so neil armstrong got a better view than was actually presented on the film here's the new rendering and it's exactly the bloody same there's no difference you're like what <laughs> how does this even make sense was that the uh, unreal engine one was it unreal engine or something they did that uh, yeah so that's like the fanciest latest graphics as well to simulate the simulation <laughs> Sim <laughs> we're appealing simulation. to a computer cgi rendering company to prove that this really happened it couldn't make it up really oh my comic well one thing today's show did was uh, all in all explain entropy didn't hear that say that again just heard entropy yeah, I mean, we're talking about computers, fans, heat, uh, how to dissipate heat. It's entropy. <laughs> so it is related. Well, I don't know. The, the, the eventual death of a computer, it dying down and eventually breaking apart and the solder coming away and the tracks you know, decaying, that's entropy. How about the ongoing slow death of things running slower as they get older? than they were new yeah that's entropy okay well that's that's why you're going to change your light bulb in your projector down the road and all the different things yeah entropy's a bitch yep yeah i like the example with the pipe starting in two minutes by the way um so you go you know will the pipe eventually fill the air above it with the butane it's like not only will the butane eventually fill the air, given enough time, the pipe will disappear. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Hey, given enough time, the pipe is gone as well. Yeah, given enough time, the pipe will disappear. The building it's attached to will crumble to the ground and disappear completely. <laughs> you know, given enough time, there'll be absolutely <laughs> no traces of anything. Oh. Well, no traces is, a, is an exaggeration. In case anybody gets pedantic in the comments. All right, let's get the train Transformed. Road. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do, uh, no, on the nature of earth, we'll one day get that right. Do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined in G Plus by Righteous Force, Tenth Man, Flatzoid and Paul. Very good to have you all. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Did we lose Tenth Man? Oh no, he's in Discord, isn't he? My bad. Yeah, had an issue getting in on Discord. So we're also joined by, uh, well, a whole bunch of people in Discord as well. Very good to have you all. Morning, good morning. Morning. Well, enthusiastic Morning, but, but I gotta <laughs> take off for a bit, so I'll see you guys later. i see you later, right? Just, it was good chatting to you. Right, let's do some housekeeping. Anybody else want to take over the, the task of asking the questions? No? <laughs> Any signs of Earth curve, Jeff? <laughs> Any signs of Earth curve? Don't all go at once. No signs, but I did have a conversation with somebody yesterday. And they were trying to walk me through the hill. Oh, Try again, am I not Paul. coming through? He's, he's, yeah, oh, that's Flatside okay. was just keen to get the next question in. Just, we'll get there. Uh, we'll, we'll, this will be smooth and coherent from here on in. You were talking to somebody. Go ahead. Yeah, and they um, they were trying to show me the, you know, talk about the solar system and started talking about the distance to the sun because the conversation came up about, you know, the gas pressure issue. And then I said, you do know there's all kinds of assumptions in there, don't you? Like the distance to the sun and... And then I showed him a video where you can calculate the curvature of, curvature of Earth on a flat table. So, that's kind of funny. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful nonsense. Go ahead, Flat Good morning. Gay chocolate. That's, that's your cue. Hi, chocolate. Yo, yo. What's going on, guys? Oh, shout out to the Flat Earth Channel dot com for smashing the super chat see what you say let's get it on a slightly bigger screen good morning flat earth good morning flat earth channel.com thank you for the super chat really appreciate your support did you want to ask a housekeeping question flatzoid sounded like you had to start <laughs> one i did try go on then 
<laughs> um, sorry, my signal is a bit bad today, so it's bouncing in and out. So I'll rather just answer. Fair enough. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Paul brought it up a moment ago. Nah, None just here. assumptions. There's no confirmed measured distance to the sun. Hey, Arwen. I'm so proud. Arwen, you're not on Google? Uh, well, I'm not in Master Beach yet anymore, so I don't know if somebody added me oh. back. That would be helpful. Oh, you want to? How can we not in Master B anymore? Oh, you're on Scout. Because I rage quit, remember? <laughs> okay, that's happened a few times. I'll add you back, no worries. Any scientific evidence of gravity? <laughs> <sighs> they don't even know what it no. is. Oh, I've got a... I've, oh, it's not on gravity, but I got a nice snippet for you, uh, Nathan. Uh, I'm going to try to post it in uh, Master B. Okay. And you're the one being addressed, so it should be good just to hear your take on it. Okie dokie. And no evidence for gravity. And what's that, anyway? I don't know. Bending of a conceptual medium is yep. space time. Giving rise to a non force force that you can think of as gravity. a force, but isn't actually a force, but you can treat it as a force even though it's not a force. That's called no, gravity. You, you know what? I want to hear from an actual studied baller how the bending of space time leads to matter clinging to a ball shape. I want to hear the connections because I still haven't found any. You know, if there's no actual force being caused by this bending of space time, then how is that even going to lead to matter clinging to a ball? I just I, don't I see don't, it. Yeah. I don't think they even know. Have, have you been, up, been watching Anthony's current battles then, Arwin? Uh, I take it that's a no. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's, this is like Anthony's whole bag at the moment. It's not a one man crusade to, to, to point out just that. Uh, we're we're both going the the the, the same direction apparently. Certainly. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No magnetic one. <laughs> Come on, I'm looking at you, Discord. What's going on? Molten iron core. Self-perpetuating magnetic fields, spherical Earths. What's going on? No fundies in there. Maybe I just not. I just need to take pay more attention and start taking them off mute. I know everyone's off mute. Ah, oh, there we go. We got uh, O U. Good to have you. Any evidence of a molten iron core O U? Um. Oh, it's Chris. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Did that yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> even if there was a molten iron core, how would that be relevant to anything? It's not going to cause a magnetic field. Whatever this magnetic field is, it can't be caused by any kind of molten iron because molten iron doesn't cause magnetic fields. So, again, what's well, even the... the claim here? <laughs> I think the and idea would be if there's a core that it would be center of a core of a ball. Yeah, at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth. Exactly. What about the uh, yeah, presupposition it's sort of, itself? Uh, Any evidence of the... Sorry, go on, Earth-shaped investigator. You go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say on that point, I had the same thought as well, you as well. It's just that it sort of just reinforces the whole spherical thing because if the Earth is this big and it's a ball, then something has to be in the middle of the ball unless the middle of the ball is empty or hollow. So, you know, you've got your nice little cartoon of the inner core, the outer core, and uh, of course they need, they need the core as well because that's where the, um, the gravity 
so-called gravity is actually generated, it's not really generated at the surface. They need all that, that really big, chunky, dense mass in the ball in the middle to have the, the outside of the ball, you know, everything sticking to the outside of the ball. They need that big, chunky ball in the middle. Right on. You think they'd have some evidence of it, right? Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container? Uh, the necessary antecedent? Nope. Is there any evidence that a vacuum can be next to gas pressure within a container? No. Is there any evidence of a natural vacuum? <laughs> no, you'd also need a container <laughs> for a vacuum. <laughs> Nature abhors a vacuum. Uh, yeah, the discussion I had with somebody yesterday, they actually says, well, it's the size, because I kept saying if mass attracts mass, and I got my two little objects in my room. I said, why don't these come go together? Well, it's too small. I was like, so, no. so size is the factor, and I kept getting him in all kinds of twists because of the contradiction in what he was saying. It was kind of funny. So mass, the earth is big enough to hold all that gas on there. They say so. Any yeah, evidence? mass doesn't attract mass. That's nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? None whatsoever. C can I answer that with an a uh, with a question? A no. Any evidence of an axis? No. Right. No, just okay. formal logical fallacies and presuppositions, I'm <laughs> afraid. <laughs> Necessary antecedent to axial rotation would be an axis, right? Right, yeah, they, they just assert it with the presupposition of an axis. Right. You know, wouldn't an it, axis be a... Uh, well, would it, wouldn't co an axis be a concept? Well, no, you can, no, you can have an axis. That's not a conceptual thing, you can physically have an axis. Learning about an axis is not a, concept, a conceptual thing. Well, geometrically it would be. You could describe it mathematically, and that would be conceptual. I can conceptualize an axis about which I turn, but I can also turn about an axis. Okay. My point is that they presuppose an axis, so they would say, in their affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy, that you've got hemispheres that you need to travel to witness lights in the sky that confirm their presupposition of an axis. But those lights in the sky just follow the, yeah. just follow the cycles. Let me just, for, it, why do the lights in the sky turn as though we have an axis? That's the, the most sort of vague, dumbed down way I can make their claim. And if you, extract out from their claim what they're actually suggesting they're saying that you must presuppose that you're first of all standing on a ball and then traveling antipodal to the southern hemisphere of that ball to observe the lights in the sky but that's essentially assuming that from where i sit now the lights that are above my head both here and where i travel to are actually under my own ass they're antipodal to me but i have to assume that when i travel from here to the towards the horizon outwards on the aeroplane or walking or on a car i travel outwards i don't observe any curve on my journey and when i arrive the sky is still above me but i must assume that the place i've traveled from is now also antipodal underneath my ass where i've arrived so my previous destination that's all presupposition presuppose you're on a ball and you've traveled antipodal from your previous destination even though there's absolutely nothing to suggest you've done so on your journey well, upon doing that, all you're doing is formulating that formological fallacy. If the Earth is a sphere, we will observe antipodal star uh, rotation in the north and southern hemisphere. We observe, when we assume we travel from north hemisphere to south hemisphere, antipodal star rotation in that north and south hemisphere that you have presupposed. Therefore, we have north and south hemispheres. If P, then Q, Q, therefore P. Affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy that makes you first assume you aren't a sphere before they start making any of their examples tie up with that presupposition. 
Yeah, too much assumptions. Assuming a ball, basically. Assuming R. There are be none here. <laughs> oh, um, I I shared that uh, snippet for you, and Master B. I don't know if somebody can hook it up or if you can find it, Nathan. I could if I was in there. If somebody added me. You want the link? Yeah. I'll send you the Is link. Every time yeah. you talk give me a minute. Give me a minute. I can probably like, no, get it. You can't suppose an R. No, Nathan, I'm not presupposing R. Just the fact that I know a sphere needs R. You know, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just because I know a sphere I needs R. I think we're going to get so a what? kick out of it, bro. So, so what? You you know it's a sphere, then. You just know it's a sphere before you go forward. That would be the very nature of that presupposition, you absolute bonehead. Wow, Craig's thicker than I thought. Yeah, I, I knew you would enjoy that. <laughs> Shout out to Joe. It's not that I'm presupposing that her. It's that I know Earth's a sphere already. <laughs> That's great. Ha ha happy belated birthday, Nathan. <laughs> I wanted better. I wanted a distance to the sun. Oh, maybe that was part of it. Was that part of that? Was that an address to the distance to the sun, by any chance? I'm not sure. I don't have the full context. The guy who shared it with me, he did he can get into all that, but he, he did say that he, uh, fight the fire for trying to strong man your the R argument. So yeah, so he gave it to me. I, I don't know what the full context of it was. I mean, they doesn't need it. What they're basically doing is trying to justify their presupposition by saying, "I already presuppose it, therefore it's right to presuppose it because I already know it's a ball." Like, mm, you explaining how a presupposition works in your cognition isn't any justification for your presupposition of an R value you have absolutely no evidence for beyond the fact that you already know. What, the already know bit being the presupposition, Craig? You moron. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. I love it. These people are retards. We're dealing with retards. What they don't understand about those um, syllogisms, if you call it that, is we can do the same thing and be just as wrong. So, for example, I could say if, you know, the Earth is flat, the sun will go down towards the horizon due to perspective. The sun does go down towards the horizon due to perspective. Therefore, the Earth is flat, right? It, it's, it's just as illogical to say that, but it's just as right sounding as theirs is. Yeah, but it's much more funny to use Dick Earth to make the comparison. You know, if you travel from the north to south testicle, you will observe star rotation in the north versus south testicle. Therefore, the Earth is a dick. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> makes sense. See? Makes sense, right? I can affirm the consequent too. If I assume the Earth is a dick, you can be damn sure at the end of my affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy, the Earth will be declared to be a dick, just like they do with a sphere. Doesn't mean it's true, which means they can affirm the consequent and assume their outcome, as Craig so eloquently demonstrated. He already knows, right? <laughs> dick. I think that concludes the housekeeping. Good little stint, that. I know a sphere needs R. <laughs> yeah, it'll sink in one day. Or maybe not, who cares? In the meantime, we'll just laugh. <laughs> yeah. But in, in all honesty, I don't think that reply was for me. I know it was probably addressed at me. It's for his audience, you know, to make himself appear to have an answer to his naive audience. Hey, Nathan, real quick, if you don't care, um, Tenth Man is saying he might be muted. Somebody may have muted him. He can't unmute himself. Can you unmute him? Oh, I can have a go. Yeah, if he's I wanted left to say it was quiet. 
It's because he's left and come back. If you join, if you rejoin the live stream part, you will. I'm back. Him. Yeah. I'm Hello, back. Clint. Whatever, whatever you did, it worked. Did you have to make outs to add housekeeping? Because I've just rounded it out. If not, <laughs> I couldn't get on, but I was enjoying the conversation. Missed anybody else in there? Did, did, did you hear the snippet? Uh, Tenth Man? The, uh, I turned off and tried to come back on, and they still had that red bar on the microphone, but whatever Nathan just did, so I may have missed some of it. No worries. Nathan, maybe, maybe you should play it again, Nathan. Uh, okay. Oh, the part you played? Yeah, that was great. Play it again just for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just 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 for kicks. No, that was no do it. Presupposing R. No, Nathan, I'm not presupposing R. Just the fact that I know a sphere needs R. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Classic. Very but funny. He, he technically didn't answer any question there. It's weird. Well, no, he just demonstrated he's the guys not... how to presuppose something and how well, he's presupposing it and why he's presupposing it. He already knows Earth's a sphere, Arwin. That's why it's perfectly acceptable for him to presuppose Earth's a sphere and use that R value that they're presupposing because he already knows. Therefore, not a presupposition according to a complete bonehead. Well, that would be the logical conclusion to draw from what he said, probably against his own uh, will. <laughs> no worries. He... Just stupid. prove that R value, just, Craig. He's saying, no, I'm not presupposing R, but I do know that a sphere does require R. <laughs> wow. So that, that's kind of what he's saying. Yeah. So he's just breaking it apart, like segregating the two things. Uh, I know Earth's a square. Well, yeah, it's going to have right angles, and I'm going to presuppose those right angles at the edge of each of those squares on the cube that is Earth. So therefore, it's got, what, square edges? Because a square obviously needs those square edges. And therefore, Earth's got square edges. Because I know it's a square already. Right. What's wrong with that? You didn't say that made Hello? sense that time, Alvin. <laughs> Why didn't you say that made sense? Because it was a lot more confusing. <laughs> it wasn't. It was exactly the same example. I know that a square needs to have right angles. Therefore, Earth has right angles, because a square has right angles, and I presuppose Earth is a square. Right. Well, he didn't take... Uh, now I'm just feeling... I presuppose Earth is a sphere, and a sphere's got an R value. Sphere, not Earth. Why am I making the example while I get rumpused? <sighs> but he so didn't say Earth. It's the same, Arwin. Because a geometric shape has got a particular aspect, and I presuppose Earth is that geometric shape, the fact that that aspect has that geometric shape is going to be my evidence that I need that geometric shape and it's perfectly acceptable to presuppose square angles to Earth because the geometric shape I presuppose it is has that aspect of it. I think you're trying to interpret it too logically for them. No, it's not logical. Well, it's not it's logical. Presuppos That's the problem. He wasn't actually claiming the Earth was a sphere at that moment, technically. Yeah, he is. What do you uh, think he's no, arguing no, no, about? No, not in that moment. Uh, of course, he is in general. Yo, if you can get me out of context or, where he's actually well, describing be beach balls, then I'll, 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 I'll recount everything <laughs> I, I said in his examples about beach balls. I figure out what he was balls. trying to say in his mind. Trying to justify because a presupposition. No, he, he said what he said. In his mind, he said, well, I'm not trying to define his thoughts, but he, already he knows clearly he's said it. Two people talking. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim's man. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm just saying he said he knows there's a sphere. That's why there's R. He no, said it. Where? No, that's Play not what again. he said. No, he, he said, did. I don't presuppose R, but I kn do know that a sphere requires R. Yeah, but and he presupposes like a Earth is a sphere. More. That's why he's using R in the measurements for Earth, Arwin. You don't he need to hear the entire context to know what he's talking he's... about. He's addressing me about R. <laughs> Isn't this a lot like the brick that's at rest on the ground and Zanuck saying it's 9.8 meters square and he's presupposing a force that's not there? Isn't this the same? It's a presupposition. Yeah. I think Arwen's just taking the piss. 
<laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> It's just trying to raise our blood temperature. A no, bit. no, I'm trying to figure out the trickery. The trickery of is of course to say... it's all stupid. It is all stupid, and it's all just trying double. They're attempting double speak. I'm just figuring out how they're trying to do it. What? Not, it's not double what speak. What the trick was? He was trying to accomplish to the more gullible of mind. Yeah, well, I that was my argument. Was... I don't think he's trying to make it make sense. He's trying to make it. He's not trying to actually address <laughs> the point because in doing so, he's made an ass of himself, which is laughable because he's literally made the point in what he said. He's presupposing Earth's a sphere, therefore it's justifiable to apply an R value to a sphere he presumes that is the Earth he lives on. So therefore I'll use R when measuring Earth. Well, you've already got your outcome, my friend. That's called an affirm uh, a presupposition. Begging the question, in other words, to assume one's outcome. His outcome being he's proving Earth's a sphere. That's what he's trying to prove. And he's saying, I'm going to use R because a sphere needs R. Well, isn't that what you're trying to prove, Craig, that Earth's a sphere? But you're just presupposing it's a sphere with an R value? That's the point, Arwin. He's justifying it by saying, well, I know a sphere needs R. Well, what What does that prove? I know a square needs to have right angles. <laughs> so what? But, oh, right, you just insert that your presupposition about the shape of the Earth is therefore justifiable? No, that's called a begging the question fallacy. Assuming your outcome. I don't remember hearing the rest of all that, but I I I it, Sorry, it'll Alan. be there, I know. It's, I don't know if Brian's trying to talk. He's flashing away, but we don't hear anything from you, Brian. Uh, can you hear me, Nathan? Yeah, you were flashing, but we couldn't hear you. Weird. Uh, I had the same problem as Tent Man. Uh, I was uh, trying to come off mute, and it wasn't coming off mute. So I don't know what that was about. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I was just going to say on the, on the whole... Uh, Piece of uh, supposing or thing that they do. There's a there's a couple of videos I shared out on Ranties there some while back, and they are uh, videos. Uh, one person is the first ever video of his kind, and it takes not it took it's basically a whole night at a at a, an elevated position, elevate highly elevated position on the equator, and it t it's a person who took 900 photographs of the sky, and it's a totally clear night. And there's two videos. There's one where it shows where it's basically a time lapse of uh, basically the camera moving in a circle. And there's a second video where it shows the slowed down version where it's just the camera taking a photograph and a photograph and a photograph. Now, because when, whatever, when the camera is moving in a circle, because of the lens, it warps things a little bit. But it, it doesn't matter because if you look at it from that position on the equator, I think it's like uh, four and a half thousand meters high or something like that. You can see both Polaris and Sigma Octantis both above the horizon. So you can see the whole sky, and that's impossible on the globe. You couldn't see that. The angles would be completely wrong. They would not be above the horizon. You'd have to look down to see one somehow, and then down to see the other. Regardless of how far away people might, uh, might, might try to say they are, it's just not possible. So being able to see the whole sky uh, f for, uh, within just one, uh, basically, one turn of your body, but you can see the whole sky. Or one turn of the camera, you can see the whole sky. And it's above the horizon. It's not even below the horizon. It's like it's impossible. So, but I don't know. I, something there. So, I haven't seen much of the video outside of when I sh uh, shared it. I haven't seen it before that. I haven't seen it after that. So, I don't know whether they're just ignoring it or what. Where can we find this video to view it ourselves? I, uh, I'm on my phone, and I'll have a look, and I'll try and come back with a link. Okay. That's what I'll do. Because yeah, I'm you. on the computer, so, so uh, if not, I'll find it, and I'll drop it in there. If I'm not now, I'll drop it in there, maybe in Master Bees or something like that. Later That'd on. be great, Brian. Thank you. Okay, on the ball. I'll go have a look there now. Thanks. Hey, Babs. How you doing? Now, I can see you've come off mute. No sound from you, though. Weird. Obviously an issue with Discord today. It's almost the same kind of weird stuff that was happening on the Google platform earlier, remember? Still is. Still I can't is. get on the Google yeah. platform. I have to come on Discord, and I ran into that problem in Discord, and now it's fine. Hmm. Hey, Nathan, on... Uh, your example of 
the roundabout with the drone three feet in a stationary position set on auto mode while the roundabout is spinning underneath. Can you go over that again? I think that was a, a really good way of doing it rather than a ball. I'm kind of struggling to hear what you say, to be honest. You remember you did a roundabout example with a drone flying three feet above the person on the roundabout that's spinning underneath uh, for Coriolis. Remember that ex example with the drone being stationary? Yeah, feel free to, if you want to just describe it, I'm more than happy. All right, I'm hearing jackhammers in the background. What is that? Yeah, there's a lot of noise here, sorry. All right, uh, I'll do my best. Uh, well, what Nathan did was he expanded on the, the Coriolis uh, example of the roundabout, and you throw a ball, but you continue to spin underneath, and it gives the apparent deflection, uh, but you're moving in the non-inertial reference frame, and uh, the inertial reference frame is where the ball is. Then he expanded on it by using a drone because the ballers say uh, that's a controlled air flight, you know, an airplane, someone's flying it. So a drone is similar. So in his new example, the drone is, if I'm saying it right, uh, goes three feet above and it's hovering in a stationary spot and the roundabout is spinning underneath and the same thing happens. So it's silly to say that Coriolis doesn't work when it's powered flight, but it does work when you throw a ball. It's either the earth is spinning underneath you or it's not. And this is the death to the ball uh, religious belief that we're spinning because the earth is obviously and observably flat even to the ballers. And yet we got to presuppose we're moving. And then they come out with Coriolis as proof. And then when we use Coriolis to validate a ball moving underneath you, it invalidates it. So we're not moving. I think Coriolis and gas pressure without a container is their death. Can I answer that? Go ahead. What's that? Go ahead, fly side. It means we're not moving. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, not spinning. Yeah, um, you know, when you look at the seven housekeeping questions, uh, and you look at gas pressure and axial rotation as two of them. And then what's left is curvature. Is there any signs? Gravity, molten iron core, R value, and the sun. Well, if there's no axial rotation, there's no need for gravity. So it just knocks out gravity. You don't even have to ask that question because if the Earth is not spinning, what, what, what's the fight for gravity? And if they say... Oh, the Earth is spinning, and the atmosphere is attached to the Earth. Well, then you got problems there because you can't have Coriolis, which they say you do, because then it's just only a non-inertial reference frame with the atmosphere attached to the non-inertial reference frame. So it invalidates their whole argument when they say the atmosphere is attached to the Earth, because they've been telling us there's Coriolis, but you can't have it with one single reference frame. And how, how, would, how would air attach the to the Earth anyway? My question. Right. I can hear because to say that. If, if I may for a moment, what they're weirdly enough trying to do is say that both the air is in lockstep with the Earth, but that other objects will still consider it as a different reference frame. So it's like they're taking air and just making it into a solid block as part of the Earth through which other things can still travel and then be subjected to Coriolis. It's a very surreal, unreal setup they're trying to presuppose with this all. Is that, Isn't it? Is that uh, yes, you think right, you've explained it exactly the way they say it? Because that sounds highly conceptual and unprovable. Yeah, they say the atmosphere, the fundies say the atmosphere moves with the Earth. Right, well, an anisotropic, inhomogeneous mixture of gases that are not attached are unbonded and, in essence, they are describing a defiance of what gas does. It's their nonsense narrative that Arwen's just described. Yeah, and when you describe it the way Arwen does, that highlights how nonsensical it is. But in order to 
in essence defy the Coriolis effect. So they're saying you've got both reference frames traveling as one. Well, you don't you don't have a load of rustling from this. It's, it's chocolate. Yeah. So uh, you, you've got one reference frame in that scenario where they describe that complete nonsense defying all understanding of gas with it traveling along with it it's like no you can't velcro stuff that's not attached to each other let alone to the surface that doesn't happen so you know that that, that they're saying that to convolute and confuse the argument about coriolis because in essence they're saying you only got one reference frame which wouldn't produce a coriolis effect and they're doing it to talk around the fact that they don't have any coriolis effect it's like we've got the atmosphere traveling with a spinning reference frame in other words, nothing happens, we don't have two reference frames, because we're not spinning. There's no necessity to have anything moving with anything, we're just not moving. But they will double speak their way around what you need to have Coriolis effect, two reference frames, it absolutely not spinning with the Earth, to explain away why planes don't have a deviation in their flight time. Oh, well, it's travelling as one. No, it isn't. You don't have a Coriolis if it's travelling as one, and that can't happen. So both sides of Coriolis they're screwed they're screwed if they say that the atmosphere travels with the earth because it can't it doesn't and that would only give them one reference frame they're screwed if they say oh we do have a Coriolis effect obviously the earth spins underneath the atmosphere well then let's see examples of that why aren't planes taking an hour and a half as the earth rotates underneath they're screwed in both situations so the fundies that defend Coriolis or use it as a proof heaven forbid of, of rotation will only give you tiny bits of the story well a ring laser gyro shows 15 degree deviation therefore the earth is spinning what, what they mean by that is the earth is spinning under the fixed frame of the gyro in a second reference frame a non-inertial rotating reference frame of earth that would be the 15 degrees that they're saying well that's Coriolis effect well, if you've got it turning underneath a fixed frame of a gyro, you've got it turning underneath a helicopter, turning underneath a drone, turning underneath you if you jump up and down. Absurd. So they're screwed in both Nathan, directions. Nathan, can I uh, offer uh, an example that also destroys it? Yeah, go ahead. The full call pendulum that's in the malls and inside the buildings, this is to address how Arwen said what they said about the atmosphere. Well, if you're going to have a full call pendulum demonstration, the pendulum going back and forth in a straight line and dominoes or whatever falling because the earth is spinning underneath, that's indoors. That's in an enclosed building. Where's the atmosphere interfering? It doesn't make any sense. Yes, that's well spotted indeed. It's like they're taking away the the air being matter being subjected to spin away from the model and then just say no it's just the physical objects they're making it very newtonian that way again making it all about physical objects doing things it's, it's weird yeah it's not weird because they're trying to make their spinning ball work with the reality we're faced with we're faced with the reality that nothing deviates there is no apparent Coriolis effect and there's no apparent motion whatsoever none well, how do you square that circle when they're trying to explain how it spins? Well, they'll come up with a moronic story about the atmosphere traveling along with the Earth as it spins. Now, as you guys are saying, well, basically you're saying, well, you'd need a closed system to do that if you could do it at all. Well, in your closed system yes. of Earth, oh no, it's an open system, but they'll abandon that temporarily. They'll abandon all apparent understanding of gas law in order to claim that this inhomogeneous mixture of gases is apparently velcroed to the earth not giving them coriolis you know if flying in the face of coriolis saying that they don't see coriolis why would they go to sub such absurd lengths because we don't observe coriolis we're not moving a smegging inch but to explain why we only see it as though nothing's happening on their spinning ball earth they'll defy the very thing they're trying to prove coriolis oh we've only got one reference frame it's all traveling as one defying gas law defying the nature of gas You, exactly. And this also destroys, especially the way you said it, and it's exactly how it should be said, is they have to have a container and one reference frame for this to work. So when they give us the examples of driving in a car with the windows up and having a roof and, and saying that you can pass a cup of coffee or drink and, and see there it is, 
Well, that's in the container. That's one reference frame. You're in the car all close. But if you take the windshield out and roll down the windows and have no roof, what's going to happen to that cup of coffee? <laughs> I mean, they are so stupid. It, it would accelerate. Hey, yeah, because uh, no it's, it's in your car. <laughs> don't, it's going to accelerate. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't throw this confusion into the mix. We'll, we'll come on to gravitational forces later if you like chocolate, but you're just going to confuse the audience with that Gra kind of joke. Gravitational. Well, here we go. Gravitational. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know Don, what that is. I asked Don in the Discord chat for, for proof or evidence of sphere, and he said there's an agency. Agency. I guess if you want proof of the sphere, you need to go to the agency to get your answers. Oh, agency. yeah. You've got to get your, your sphere belief from an approved source. Tenth man NASA. Don't you know? Well, you can yeah. pick whatever priest you the like. Head agency of <laughs> but your choice, right? You can go to the priesthood of television and Worship at the altar of Cox and DeGrasse Tyson, or you could go to the, you know, the government-funded priesthood and go to NASA. You know, there's plenty of priests. There's loads of churches. Pick it, pick whichever one you like the best. They're all pretty much punting the same thing, right? Earth as a ball, traveling around yep. the sun. It's all pretty much the same bullshit. They've just got different angles on it. But you know, everyone's free to go to whatever religion they like. Well, their astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when he said that the kicker in the Cincinnati Bengals game kicked the ball and it was Coriolis that helped the field goal go in because the earth and the field goal moved slightly. So it was Coriolis that won the game. He just turned that whole argument in our favor when he said that. Yeah. You've got to be a high priest of doublespeak and heliocentrism to get away with asserting how Coriolis should actually affect the world we see. The goals moved as the earth rotated underneath the ball that travelled apparently in a straight line. Looked like it curved, didn't it? Looked like it curved into that goal. No, no, it travelled in a straight line. It seemed to curve because earth rotated underneath. Is that right, Mr. Tyson? Like the planes, right? They seem to curve because the earth rotates underneath... Oh, no, 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 that, no, that, that, that doesn't happen, though, does it? There's no apparent deviation. There's no Earth rotating underneath. There's no 1.5-hour duration from Charlotte, North Carolina to L.A. because Earth's rotating underneath like it rotated underneath that ball that Tyson says is travelling in a straight line as the Earth rotates underneath. Well, if it's rotating underneath that ball, it'd be rotating underneath a drone and a plane, and your flight time would be drastically reduced when travelling west. It isn't. I mean, that's preposterous because we don't spin. We're stationary, blatantly stationary. And the fundies who defend this lie of us spinning and moving and hurling through space will literally claim that gas doesn't do what it does. It's attached to the Earth gas, that thing that expands in all directions and is completely free and unbonded. Yeah, that thing is actually Velcro to the Earth. It's like magic gorilla glue. What's Sound that? very selective. Hold on, just well, one more bit to that puzzle. One little, one little extra, extra additive. But obviously, it being Velcroed with superglue to the Earth, that inhomogeneous mixture of gases, that would actually fly in the face of us actually having a Coriolis effect. But I'll say that because that's what it seems like when there isn't any. That's the reason there isn't any. Because of a complete nonsense story I make up that flies in the face of gas law to show you how we don't have Coriolis. That's my explanation for Coriolis. That's why we don't have it. No, we don't. It sounds very selective, though. But mass, well, like, Nathan. Gas particles no, have ahead. mass, but mass. That's right. And they expand in all directions to fill the <laughs> container and are unbonded, free to move wherever they well, like, regardless well, of what's, what's happening What's mass has them. to do with it anyway? <laughs> like, mass causes something? Uh, what? I what you well, say, even what? with their argument with gravity, even if you give it to them, it doesn't affect gas. So how could it even work? Uh. You know when they say that if you're in a car moving at a constant speed or if you're in a train moving at a constant speed, 
that that's the same as the earth spinning, that you don't realize that you're moving. But that's a lot of rubbish because you always know you're moving. And as I said to one of them before, I said, well, put a blind man in a car and have, a, have a, the person drive at 60 miles an hour uh, constantly on a motorway or put them into a train or a plane. You tell me they won't know they're moving. And there was no answer for that. No, it's a lie. Of course they're moving. Everyone knows when you're moving. You know, even if you're in an elevator or anything, you always know when you're moving. If, if, if the atmosphere was stuck for to the The air, funny part about that, I'm sorry, Tiff, man, but that well, very I'm question sorry. I was asked this morning, somebody asked me uh, if I'm in my car. As a matter of fact, it was Jazakanda. He asked me if I was in my car accelerating to 60 miles per hour, could I feel that? And I was quite shocked because I'm, of course I'm going to feel that. As to what kind of car you have, <laughs> that you wouldn't feel it. Exactly. I feel it. I like those kind of questions. They're very telling. That it's it's showing cognitively yeah. where he's at when he's squaring the circle that can't be squared, and it leads him to asking you a question like, "That's obviously the case. You don't feel any accelerative forces. You don't know you're moving when you're traveling sixty miles an hour." Um, yeah, I do. Well, if you were on a plane, well, yeah, I do. Yeah, I still uh, do. I've owned uh, several motorcycles uh, without the fairing in front to block the wind. Uh, I've never been tempted to drink a cup of coffee while riding my motorcycle at 60 and miles an hour. And you always get tired when you're traveling. You always get tired, don't you? You drive a yeah. car for an hour or two, you'll be tired. So how could we be moving at uh, whatever, hundreds of miles an hour and whatever else? On a spinning board. <laughs> that's not a good argument. We, we have to be sleep daily. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good argument. I do get tired every single day. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I asked you. Yeah. Well, the uh, the argument yeah. I was going to say uh, while Chocolate was bringing in that good point was um, gravity, according to them, is strongest at at the ground level, from my understanding. So at its strongest point, whatever that is, they ascribe that force to gravity at ground level. It can't keep the gas at ground level. So how is it able to keep the whole atmosphere attached to the Earth if it can't even, at its strongest point, control it at the ground level where it's produced? Exactly. Uh, uh, Nathan? I just posted a video in the Discord. I know you can't, I don't think you can share. I can jump on Skype and share if you really want. But for those in Discord, there's a video of a guy doing a demonstration of Coriolis a roundabout, and he uses a drone. And the drone, and you can clearly see what would happen if, if Coriolis effect on Earth were real, say with airplanes or helicopters. The drone is powered flight, right? It's, it's me um, mechanized, it's controlled. And yet it still experiences Coriolis over the roundabout. The roundabout spinning underneath, the drone is staying still. And, and you could you could clearly see that that the roundabout is moving and the effect that it's having on the drone. So it's it's not happening on Earth. There's there's no way it doesn't we don't experience what the video is showing. And I posted a comment about why his drone isn't the earth isn't moving underneath his drone. And of course I got no response, but just thought you would enjoy that video that's great you have to share that with me that's brilliant we were only talking about the, the, the other day i was saying what would be a cracking example of coriolis well 10th man's already detailed this while i had washing machine noise but yeah it's having a drone it's in fixed powered flight if you just get it to hover above a roundabout and you know from the point it leaves your hand on the non-inertial reference frame that's spinning it will go up and stay there and just hover and then on the non-inertial reference frame, as you spin beneath it, it looks like it's coming closer, going further away, coming closer, going further away. You know, you could probably map it in like a little spirograph. But who cares? It's not moving. The apparent deviation is because you're spinning underneath. So if there's any Coriolis on Earth, it's because you're spinning underneath. A plane, a helicopter, a drone, a ball, you if you jump up and down, a bullet, anything that leaves the spinning reference frame. So, if Earth's spinning, you'd see Coriolis effect quite obviously all the time. And when we point that out, they double speak us. They say, oh no, it's because the Earth and atmosphere are attached. No, they're not. That's impossible. That's not what gas does. You can't have that happening, my friend. What's that? Oh, well, no, it does. It just travels along because it's all 
kept in motion by the open system that we live in next to a vacuum. The whole system is absolutely absurd. How anybody can believe this nonsense. Ah, that's why we've got loads of depressed fundies around us. <laughs> that's why. You can't. Squaring those circles isn't possible. You know, the whole system is a contradiction based on a presupposition that doesn't make any sense and isn't how the world presents itself to us. It doesn't present itself as having a sky vacuum with things deviating when they leave a spinning reference frame. It's just nonsense. Earth's flat. We're not moving. Space is not real. Space, that is, a vacuum. The sky is not a vacuum. Earth is flat. We're not moving. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the video on my phone now. It's, it, it, it was either this or a snippet of this or another one that did the same thing, and it's very telling. It's fantastic. At go to four, around 410 is where he starts the drone. He does a lot of good. He throws a ball. He shoots. He shoots a little projectile with a little um, handheld device and a couple others. It's really it really demonstrates Coriolis. Now, of yeah. course, yeah, I, I admit it's it's a little exaggerated. Obviously, it's it's spinning fast, but still, you, you get the point. And this that's what would happen. You would hover above the Earth in a helicopter or whatever, and the Earth would move. <laughs> and if they say, well, it doesn't because of the, the atmosphere spins with the Earth in lockstep, uh, like what is like Velcro. Well, then there is no Coriolis effect. So which is it? Well, then they would be having to admit at that point we're in the container. Yeah, they have to defy their open system next to a vacuum in order to even assert that argument that flies in the face of gas law. Exactly. Thanks to Colin for the super chat. It's as flat as the eye can see. Indeed. Right up to the diffraction limit otherwise known as a reified sphere edge, called the horizon. That would be as far someone as I can in see. Sorry, go on. Someone in Discord said, after I posted that video, it says, we see Coriolis on Earth like we see in this video. I said, really, where? He said, ever heard of a hurricane? So I don't remember there being a hurricane in that video. Oh, there's, hold on. there's balls thrown and, and drones. Let me just draw a swift conclusion. Coriolis effect... A bit like gravity when you're speaking to fundies on this subject. It's a not actual force. A not actual deviation. Let me explain it to anybody who thinks Coriolis is somehow demonstrated in a hurricane. The drone doesn't move. It's not deviating. So you hold a drone on a roundabout. You push the up stick on the remote control and then let go. And it stays precisely where it is. It doesn't move left. It doesn't move right. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. It's stationary to all intents and purposes. Below, you are rotating. So the drone seems to move closer and further away from you as you spin underneath, even though it's not actually moving. It's not an actual deviation. It's an apparent deviation because you rotate underneath. Now, I absolutely guarantee you that a hurricane is not a not actual deviation in any way, shape, or form. It's a deviating thing. It's an actual thing that's spinning and moving, unlike the drone in this example. It's not an actual deviation. It's an apparent deviation caused by you spinning underneath. So the hurricane, which is spinning above, isn't you spinning underneath looking at something above you seeming to deviate like a drone it's something that's actually spinning and potentially deviating or not being the same as something else that you'll compare it to that's not coriolis if you think that the deviation in something in a hurricane is a not actual deviation caused by you spinning underneath you fundamentally don't understand what coriolis is well said it actually disproves the atmosphere is attached to the Earth because it's obviously not because it's an actual <laughs> right. hurricane. <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, right. How do you have surface winds in all directions? You can't, right? Yeah, didn't QE talk about, didn't QE talk about if the Earth is spinning west to east, what about the east, north, and south surface winds? <laughs> yeah, that's how he had rumpus. <laughs> that was the next quote out of um, rumpus's mouth, quote, Air is not the atmosphere, end quote. The rumpus, 2016. Had over a barrel, 
in exactly that way, Tenth Man. But yes, precisely. Another good show today. Oh yeah, I posted that. Sorry. Yeah, go on, Brian. I was just patting myself on the back for another good show. Yesterday's show was good today. Show on. <laughs> I'm smiling at the end. <laughs> go ahead. I was just saying, I posted that video. I posted it to uh, Tenth Man, and I posted it in the Science versus Pseudoscience uh, um, chat, chat box. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I, at first, I thought it was actually... At first, I thought it wasn't real until I looked into it, because it says it's, it's a virtual reality movie. Until I looked, looked into it, and it's actually 900 uh, photographs all put together over the course, uh, taken over the course of one night from Ecuador. So, uh, and uh, the the uh, video part of it, it warps a bit in the video part because of the camera lens having to move around. Uh, and, uh, obviously, because it's, it's moving at a rate that we wouldn't normally see. But it's like as if you're standing in one spot and you're spinning around looking at the whole sky. Very cool. What I'm hoping a friendly flatty with a cheap drone will do is exactly that demonstration. They'll just sit on a roundabout going relatively slowly. Tripod set up, you know, like with a one of those bendy camera mounts. Attach it to the arm of the uh, roundabout and point it up roughly at where you're going to point the drone. And then you spin on the roundabout, hold out the drone, push the up stick till it reaches roughly centre of frame in your camera, and then just spin underneath it and point your camera at it as you as you rotate around slowly and you see it going further away closer further away closer now it's not moving it's an apparent deviation that coming hey, closer I, going further away that's not it actually deviating it's I, not actually coming closer but for the fact that you're rotating underneath can i Go nominate on. a cheap flat earther that might do that probably someone with like a like a 20 dollar drone though like a cheapy thing no then ranty get a drone yeah, but it's, that's not... No, it needs somebody with a cheap drone, like a cheap toy drone, not not a professional giant monster. You know, I could just imagine you're, holding, would, it on, you're holding it on your roundabout, you push the up stick, you get it slightly wrong, and <laughs> it falls off the roundabout. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, it needs to be done with something really, relatively cheap. So, in other words, it's, it's one of those things that somebody watching will hopefully go, hmm, I've got a cheap drone, that's a really easy video I could replicate, and, you know... I'd even do it myself. I just haven't got a twenty dollar drone that's disposable to to actually, you know, most of these twenty dollar drones they go up for one flight and then break. So you know, if you can capture a flight of a drone that you've just bought that's a cheap toy someone's given you as a gift, um, you might actually good get a good Coriolis demonstration out of it if it can hover in one place, which I don't know if they can. I don't know how much you'd have to spend to achieve that, but one for the audience maybe we shall see anyway with that i'm going to say first and foremost if you are watching on the nathan oakley premiering stream then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow a massive huge enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in live for smashing the super chat liking commenting sharing subscribing and all that good stuff of course a massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this debate possible as I say, stay tuned if you're watching on the Nathan Oakley Proming stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Stuff. Now all we need is a, a blazing row. Make the after show. <laughs> Where's Arwin? <laughs> no, it's the calm before the storm, perhaps. You do what? say some funny stuff, Nathan. Say again. I think somebody said you do say some funny stuff, Nathan. Uh, it depends on the context of the person who's throwing that at me. Maybe I shall say thank you. Maybe I'll say screw you when it turns out he means my assertions in regards to the fundamentalist religious sphere belief some people hold. We'll see. We shall see. I think, it, I, I think it's the latter.
I've turned you up a bit. Say, say that again. I say I think I think it's the latter, the second one. I <laughs> think it's the first. Yes, we'll find out shortly. Yes, if he speaks again, I don't think he's gonna say it. Was that you, Tiwari, that spoke? Have you found any evidence for a flat Earth yet? <laughs> yes, we're living one. Look at all the ballers who join after the show ends. They don't want to be on... I guess they don't want to be live recording. They're okay with after show recording. No, we, we were just muted on the live show. My bad. I've normally got Righteous Force to unmute people. I did try and unmute you all. You do that quite a lot, Nathan. You're like, has anybody got any evidence for a globe? And everybody's muted. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you got some then? What's your evidence of R? Um, the fact that there's no evidence for not R. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's he's oh, gone to the FT FT school of logic. What's your evidence of R? I don't. I don't even believe that was a real statement. It just sounds stupid now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The fact that we have literally hundreds of satellites orbiting oh, Earth, and then this guy. Count. Here we go. Right. This, this will quickly. be a fun after show. Let's deal with these quickly. Where are those satellites? You hear my question. I said there's hundreds of verifiable satellites orbiting the Earth. Yeah, I heard your statement, are. and maybe you didn't hear my question in response. Where are those satellites? Where? Yes. Orbiting the Earth. Where? Orbiting is a presupposition. Where? What's the region? Up. They're in up. Anywhere from about 300 miles to 300,000. And where's that? Has that got a name, that place? You can assign what Well, I'm asking you. Like to I'm asking you where they are. You're being very vague. You're giving me a height well, rather I, than I, a, a location. I, where are you, Nathan? I'm in Leamington. Where are these satellites? I gave you a very specific range. Like range. No, anybody watching will be questioning why you'd be so cagey about answering such a simple question. Telling. Oh, I, I wouldn't the be confident about at all. If I, give you, if I give you a number specific thing, I don't know what more specific. specific did I say give me like. a number of their height, or did I say where are they? <coughs> where are they? Where's that car you're buying? It's in, it's in Kidderminster. Where are these satellites you say exist? Would you like me to name the orbits for you? Like, I did, sorry, nice now, now you're like describing a, a trajectory rather than a location. Where, where are they? What's the place called that they're at? Well, let's call the one that's at uh, 300 miles. Let's call that one Tony, and the one that's at 300,000 miles. What's the region where these are at? Space. <clears throat> Space. <clears throat> Listen, why can't he say that? Oh, space. Yeah, yeah, you can talk about was that Was that an answer? Is that the region? Space? Yeah, if you you space can, you can call it a sky like, you sure. think they're in a sky vacuum oh well that's a big problem if you think these satellites oh, so and before so i've left him so much air for him to say that one little word the place they're at the minute i start to rape it he starts talking through me oh so that yeah so that you can so you're gonna him? talk that's through fine. me yeah. you took your time answering the question now i'm talking i left you plenty of space to talk now I'm demolishing that nonsense, my friend. You're not, yeah? you're not demolishing anything. Talk through my statements again, and I'll eject you, you little turd. I left loads of dead air, loads of gaps for you to say the place you believe these satellites are. Lots of pauses. Now I'm talking. Space is fake. There is no sky vacuum with bits of metal floating around in orbits in a place that can't possibly exist likewise there's no gas lamp in narnia it's not a real place outer space isn't real 
It violates the second law of thermodynamics. It violates a lot of different laws regarding to gas. So we don't have a sky vacuum wow. with these hunks of metal in it. That's a nonsense belief you have. Okay, Fundy? That, now, do you want to appeal that's, to that's something nice different? Job, I haven't finished talking. Do you want to appeal to something? I haven't finished talking, Fundy. Do you want to appeal to something different to get your R value this time? Because you can't appeal to metal hunks in a place that doesn't exist. Is that clear? Oh, but I can prove that it exists. You can, can prove can that there. the sky is a vacuum, no worries. If the sky is a vacuum, I would need some sort of demonstration that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container. So go, give me gas pressure without a container. Show it me. That's, that's, a, that's a straw man. We're talking... Straw man? Straw man? You've just said that you can prove space is real and space is vacuum next to where we are now with gas pressure. Now, that's nonsense. It's not a possibility. And if you're saying it is a possibility, show me gas pressure without a container. No, that would be a straw man. It's the second time you've said it. Now, detail what a straw man is and how this is a straw man. Yeah, so I'm talking about there are metal things in the sky. You're saying prove that the sky is there. I'm like, no. no, I said space. Outer space is fake. You claim the sky is a vacuum. That's where the region, these things that you claim prove are, are. That's their location. The thing you were so hesitant about. Now I'm saying that place isn't real. If you're going to appeal to things in Narnia, I'm going to say no. That's a nice way to straw me in something. Maybe. It's not a straw man. You can't have gas pressure without a container. And according to your fundy rhetoric about the region these mental things are in, it's a sky vacuum. Well, we've got gas pressure that violates a natural law. Entropy would take hold and the gas we breathe would fill that sky vacuum out of space where you say these satellites are. So it's not a straw man. It's a direct address of your nonsense. That's a wonderful straw man. Theme. You just keep saying straw man. I'm going to give you one last opportunity to explain how my absolute demolition of your claim of a sky vacuum with metal trash cans orbiting in it is a straw man. Now, don't just say it's a straw man. Explain what a straw man is and how what I've said is a straw man. Go. Sure. No problem. A straw man is when you take someone's argument, you obfuscate it into another argument based on something that you want to argue about. You've taken the fact that I have claimed that there's something in space and you said space doesn't exist. Yeah, that's the fundamental crux of the demolition of the argument. Space doesn't exist and you're appealing to something in a place that doesn't exist. So you're going to just continue appealing to that hunk of trash that's in a place that doesn't exist. Oh, well, I can prove Aslan. Well, how do you prove it? Well, because the gas lamp's got this perfectly reasonable theoretical idea around it. No, we're not no. talking about real things. We're talking about space that isn't real. So you're going to appeal to something in a place that isn't real. That's the end of the argument. Not straw man. No, a no, direct no, address no, to your claim. The location of what you're claiming is in a place that isn't real. It's not straw man. It's a direct so address to your claim. He did straw man the argument. Okay, and now you're angry that you did, you realize. He's just, he's not detailed a straw man. He's detailed a direct address to his claim. I can appeal to these hunks of trash in the sky vacuum to prove R. Oh, well, the sky vacuum isn't real, so you can't appeal to that. Oh, well, you're straw manning me. No, that's a direct address to your claim. Nope. <laughs> nope. Hand wave to my rebuttal. Yes, my friend. You're not going to get away with appealing to things that take place in Narnia. Yeah, me using the gas lamp in Narnia as my hunk of crap, proving my point about something taking place in Narnia, isn't going to fly. Your hunk of trash isn't a light in Narnia. It's a heap of crap in a sky vacuum, not a straw okay, man. Well, I can prove that they're there. What, in a place that isn't real? Oh, I can prove the lamp in Narnia is there. That that's a that's a great straw man. Uh, no, I'm saying I can prove the lamp in Narnia is there. It's the same exact equivalent to what you're saying. The place isn't real, but I can prove the lamp is there. I can prove the lamp is in Narnia, like you can prove the satellites are in the fake region called space. It's a, that's a wonderful obfuscation, Nathan. Uh, obfuscation. It's another direct address to your point. I can still prove. 
that the trash cans in the sky vacuum are real. I say I can still prove that the lamp in Narnia is real. Absurd. No, you're not going to get past my demolishment of your argument based on the medium not being real. You're not going to get past that. You're not going to call it an obfuscation or a straw man because it isn't. Space is real. I can show you that those satellites are, and in fact, things like the ISS are real. You can actually even observe it yourself. I can observe a light. I cannot observe a second law of thermodynamics violation known as a sky vacuum. I can observe lights in the sky. That's correct. That does not prove the sky is a vacuum, my friend. Also, you can see it. You can measure it. See what? A vacuum? Are you fucking retarded? No, Nathan, uh, you seem to be Don't confused stutter. about the I said you can see you a can vacuum. You can measure it, look at it, You can it, see look the vacuum of the sky, can you? you? What, are you just saying sky clear. vacuum is just black? Black means sky vacuum. It's blue right now. So what do you mean I can see vacuum? I don't see vacuum. If I the saw ISS vacuum, I wouldn't space. see clouds. I'd see them dispersing into it. So you're saying I can see it. The sky is supposed to be a vacuum in this explanation of where these things are. And you're saying I can see it. No, I definitely don't see the sky being a vacuum. Because I mean, if I did, I'm finished. The ISS I'm finished. You can observe it. A, a sky vacuum? No, I definitely. My point is, I definitely don't observe a sky vacuum. If it what, was a vacuum, again. the gas would be wonderful. filling it. Good show. That's what gas does. Good show. You're not listening. Good show. I don't well, observe a sky vacuum. If I did, the gas would be filling it. That's what gas does. So I'm not observing a sky vacuum, which you say you can somehow whistle past. Like it's a straw man? It isn't. It's not a real place. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not observing a sky vacuum. You're making a claim and you are refusing to refute it and unable to refute it. Which uh, is I really am refuting it based on the medium you claim these hunks of metal are in. If I claim That's I can prove there's a special man. type of gas lamp. Try. If I claim I can prove a special type of gas lamp in Narnia, I don't need to babble on about the gas lamp. You can debunk my Nathan, claim by saying no, nah, it's not real. Uh, you're not going to whistle through also it and talk through it, my friend. You're rumpusing my point. My point being that you're trying to describe a gas lamp in Narnia and how it works and how it's real. Nathan, now, the gas Nathan, lamp in Narnia trying... isn't what I'm arguing about. I'm saying Narnia is not real. Now, if you want to keep you're, you're appealing to the gas hissy, lamp, and every time I talk, he talks through me. It doesn't address the fact that he's got a fake place where these things are supposed to be. He just says that's a straw man and carries on trying to detail a gas lamp in a place that isn't real. And, and you refuse to actually address it. It's address very what? interesting. Address it's very what? Telling. That if the sky was a vacuum, the gas I'm breathing would be filling it. You, you don't even know the equation on how that would work, Nathan. You uh, can't... Do I need to know the equation to know that the gas would fill the space? Oh, yeah, Nathan. How, how long would it take for it to fill the space? It would fill it instantaneously. Oh, instantaneously? Then yeah, basically instantaneously. If you've got a never-expending, absolutely enormous vacuum at 10 to the minus 17 tor, then yeah, the gas we breathe would instantaneously fill the vacuum and we wouldn't have any left. You, it would you, fill the vacuum You just space showed how you equally. don't understand the second He's law. talking through me, even though I'm answering his question that he's just asked me. Now I'm answering him, but he's talking right through me. Yeah, I'll no, try again. It, I'm just I'll try again. You don't I'll try again. I'll try again things. without you talking through me. I'll try once more. Yeah, the gas would instantaneously fill the space. Now, you can check this out in a lecture that an MIT guy gave where he explained exactly this. You take a gas at pressure, you put it next to a vacuum, and then you remove the barrier. And the gas instantly fills the available volume once it becomes available to it. Right, that was a lecture on the second. I haven't finished. What is this asshole's problem? I'm detailing to people about an MIT lecture on the second law of thermodynamics that answers the very question you've asked me about how quickly the gas would fill it. Instantaneously is my answer. Hey, Nathan, and there I is just, a I lecture just, that this asshole, posted. who is a fundamentalist religious seller, will not let the audience hear about. Because it flies in hey, the Nathan, face of his assertion I, no, actually... of a region that can have satellites orbiting that violates this natural law as detailed by this MIT professor who explains that the gas would instantaneously, to answer this asshole's question that he won't let me do, it would instantaneously fill the volume that was available to it. Now, available volume in your sky rhetoric with a vacuum is all of space. 
and it would instantaneously fill that volume, debunking any notion of a sky vacuum, which is where you claim these satellites are. So now, after me meticulously detailing how it demolishes your fundamentalist assertion of a sky vacuum with hunks of metal in, are you going to hand wave it and tell me it's a straw man and an obfuscation again, Fundy? Go ahead. It's a logical so, fallacy. Yeah, go ahead. Take them. What's the logical fallacy here? The logical fallacy is that he's claiming that there's pressure next to a vacuum and there isn't. Exactly. Mm. You can't have pressure next to a vacuum. That's exactly it. And he's but not claiming it. Randall and you are claiming that. it. You and Randall are claiming that because you're the ones who are stupid enough to believe that. Nathan no. is not claiming that because <laughs> Nathan, Nathan is not a stupid person. He doesn't believe oh, stupid things. I know Nathan's things. not a stupid person. He yeah, so stupid. Randall, how come you're coming in here with Tiwari and making a stupid claim the gene over way of bypassing the, the natural law of entropy? Right? So wait a minute, Brian, listen to what I just said. Like? Show us, show me Show me your physical demonstration from, from a laboratory right, of gas pressure next to a vacuum without containment. Wait, you want me to create in a yes, laboratory? you have got to create this or else <laughs> your claim is down the toilet. No, because or, what you're doing yes, is you're you never come, a You're a lot of talking, but you never come up with that thing. You're or, building or a straw man. Or you could just test this for real. You never come up with the actual physical demonstration. You come up with a lot of talk about a sky vacuum, but you never have any proof for it. The only proof oh, you have I, for it is what you believe is happening out in it. I have, I have literally hundreds of demonstrations of this. And you're Every saying time we want, you have hundreds uh, of demonstrations of, of, of what? Of going okay, into space. Can you space. post one? Are you free now going to space? Just one. Just one. Just Nothing one. about the globe model exactly. states that we have pressure next to a vacuum. It's a misconception. Yeah, you're it right is a misconception. You don't have pressure next to a vacuum. Ever. It doesn't happen. Unless yeah, there's a we container have a pressure between the two. gradient next to a vacuum. That's no, a you can't mean. have a pressure gradient without having pressure it, in the first place. You don't have so, pressure without a container. That is the end of that. You cannot have the word pressure in, any, in anything to do with gradient without having actual gas pressure in the first place. It's not possible. It's an impossible task. You cannot prove it. You haven't proved it yesterday. You won't prove it tomorrow. You will never prove it. You're I'm in absolute fantasy land. Brian. Nathan is trying to show you you're in fantasy land Brian, and all you're a, doing is arguing with him. No, there's a you question guys you can, like to throw around Brian, this 10 to the minus 17 you can ask this guy if I can just get in for a second. Have seconds. you ever actually written that We don't throw down. that Brian, around. NASA Brian, throws Brian, that Brian, around. Brian, Brian, Brian. NASA. <sighs> Brian. Write that number down. Is it a negative number? Brian, it's in minus four. Brian, you can draw a conclusion to this conversation if you can just get a word in edgeways. Stop trying to be... Sorry, Brian, sorry, not, just need to ask the guy one question. So the guy's saying you can have a gas pressure gradient next to a vacuum. That's his absurd claim. The, the question no. you ask him in response to that is, at the top of the gradient, yeah, that gas pressure right at the top, what's that pressing on at the top there of that yeah. gradient? What's it pressing on there? It's pressing on the vacuum of space. <laughs> it's what? pressing on a vacuum. <laughs> you think you can press wow. it? You think you can press on a vacuum? Do you? Let me just correct this retard. You don't press on a vacuum if you're a gas. You disperse into it. <laughs> Did you hear what me, Fundy? The minus just, just, this is for Brian's mean, benefit. Nathan? It's not for you not to not shout over me, Fundy moron. This is for Brian's benefit. I'm educating another flat earther on how to rip people like you and their stupid claims to pieces. You don't press on a vacuum, Muppet. You Space disperse negative pressure. into it. Did he just say negative pressure? Did That's you what say, you're claiming. You're did claiming. Did he just say negative pressure? Atmosphere away. It does. Let me just laugh at him again. This idiot. Did you say negative pressure? That's what you're yeah, claiming. I think you did. That's what I'm claiming. Sorry, you're divining <laughs> my thoughts and asserting a <laughs> claim on me. I'm a stupid that? asshole. No, don't Straw do that. Man. Uh, let's just wave my finger at him. Uh, QE. Don't assert that I've made claims I haven't made. You little prick. Don't do that here. I have not made any negative pressure claims. Now, I want to know why those words That's crossed. Don't interrupt me, you stupid dick. Why have those words crossed? All the time. I am talking, shut up, moron. The idiot here who's just said I'm claiming negative pressure. 
I have not said those words other than in reference to you using them. And I want to know why those words cross your lips. Don't tell me what I'm claiming. Negative pressure. Are you fundamentally retarded? Do you not understand why that's fundamentally impossible, moron? Tell me why you can't have negative pressure. Go. Because it's nonsensical. It's still just pressure. Oh, right. And pressure space as in... does have pressure. It's just very, very low pressure. And what's it pressing on? A vacuum, moron. I am talking to you, stupid retard. Is it pressing on a vacuum, you stupid dick? If you shut up for more than a second, I'll... I'll go ahead. The vacuum of space, as described, has a pressure of 10 to the minus 17 tor. That is still pressure. It's not nothing. Are you having me on? Do you understand the difference between the pressure here and the claimed pressure of the sky vacuum? Do you understand the differential? Yes, it's a difference between 760 tor and 10 to the minus 17 tor. That's absolutely <laughs> enormous! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. Don't worry about so, that. So, if you generate a vacuum here on Earth in a vacuum chamber, what's the tor value of that? Is it less than the claimed sky vacuum value or more? So, you're saying it's impossible because it's a big. I didn't ask that. I said if you create a vacuum here on Earth, is it less than 10 to the minus 17 tor or more? Typically more, because we don't have strong... More? You think we can create a vacuum of a greater or lesser pressure, less than 10 to the minus 17 tor? You think we're capable of generating a vacuum of that degree here? No, I just said we can't. We don't have strong enough... Oh, so we can't. So it's less. So you're saying that a vacuum we can create here is less than the claimed pressure of space? Not... No, anywhere more. near as high a value. Not anywhere near as devoid of anything. Well, answer me this. If the gas that we have here has any means whatsoever of entering the best possible vacuum we have, does the gas stop next to it? Or does it try and fill the vacuum if it has a means of doing so? With no active forces acting on it? Yeah, it will just disperse. But oh, there's right. this thing no, no. called gravity. Uh, okay, which you no worries. There is an active force because you know what I'm going to give you? It's my, it's your lucky day, Fundy. I'm going to give you Newtonian and Einsteinian gravity at 200% force for both of them. You can have them. They're One yours. Twin power Listen up. Activity. Listen up. It's a gift. Yeah? Not only that, because your Fundy belief in these forces is in effect when you create a gravitational chamber that's going to remove the air pressure, we're going to assume that those forces are in effect. Okay, Fundy? Yeah, those magic forces, your Fundy forces, are going to be there when you create a vacuum chamber. In this instance, I'm giving them you. It's like Christmas. So, now answer me. You've got that nowhere near as strong a vacuum as the claimed sky vacuum, and we put a little hole in it. Does the gas outside try and fill the available volume of that chamber? Or does it just stop next to the hole? So you're talking about a hole that's like the thickness of, say, I don't know, a piece of whatever the material is that this chamber is made of. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah. yeah. Unlike. So the difference uh, uh, between yeah, that and clarity, atmospheric you're asking, pressure so I'm going to give you clarity. So don't ask and then carry on talking. There. Don't ask and then continue to talk. Yeah. In this example, unlike the completely open system of Earth, that is not only not a chamber or a container of any description that we're going to put a hole in. It's a completely open system next to a claimed vacuum of the sky at 10 to the minus 17 tor. In this instance, we're going to make a tiny hole in the vacuum chamber. And what I'm asking you is, with a teeny, teeny hole, will the gas on the outside of that far less of a vacuum than the sky vacuums claim to be at a much lower pressure differential will that gas just get to that hole and go nah, i'm not going to go in there or will it try and fill the volume of the vacuum as quick as it possibly can 
and he fell to make him. You got to remember, you believe Kick in David a out. barometer right. vacuum. Bye bye so. vacuum. Bye bye, David. Sorry, Fundy. <laughs> Fundy. So, making, unlike, I'll just I think... get us back on track. Unlike the entirely open system of Earth next to an extreme vacuum, we're going to have a little poxy vacuum that we can make here on Earth, and we're only going to put a tiny hole into it, as opposed to open up the entire system to the vacuum. I'm asking, will the gas just stop at the hole, even though it's a much lower differential than we're talking with the sky vacuum? Is it going to stop? If have a holiday and not if do that what hole gas does. is 200 miles long in length there will be a pressure gradient in it uh, no that's not what i asked sorry this chamber's not 200 miles long are, are you retarded what kind of gas chamber are you building in your mind when and i ask you to conceptualize like, like, this and finish talking somehow retards when i say build a vacuum chamber conceptually make it 200 miles long no that's not what i asked that's not what I was saying. No, you're making my example totally different so you can get around it. Yeah, we just got a normal vacuum chamber. Uh, the best possible pump you've ever seen. And we're making a little hole and asking if the gas tries to fill the vacuum or not. If the pressure differential at the other end of the hole is like, say, an inch away, then there's a greater differential than if the other end of the hole is like a mile away or if it's 200 miles away do you sorry i haven't talked about the hole being 200 miles away fundy this is your second attempt at this obfuscation who is the other My guy word. saying i was logical fallacy yeah this is an obfuscation it's and the distance vacuum on the pressure differentials long. matters you're talking through me my friend we've given you to clarity this is now the third time this isn't a 200 mile vacuum chamber have you ever has anybody ever experienced a 200 mile vacuum chamber no. Then it's a straw man argument. Because... Uh, what, a straw man argument about a vacuum with gas next to it? No, my friend, it's a direct comparison. Do you know what a straw man is? Because this isn't that. This is not a direct comparison between... Direct comparison between the vacuum of the sky at 10 to the minus 17 tor and us at atmospheric pressure and the differential thereof versus a much less differential of a vacuum chamber we can create here and the atmospheric pressure versus it. No, it's not direct. Yeah, it's a direct comparison. I'm just asking if you make a tiny hole as opposed to having the entire area of Earth open to the vacuum, will the gas go through the hole or not? Do you want me to explain the logical fallacy that you're... It's not a logical fallacy. It's a direct comparison that you're not answering and you're obfuscating. So I'll now answer for you, Fundy. I know it's a struggle because the answer's obvious to everybody with ears and a brain. Yeah, that gas will definitely try and fill that vacuum if you make a hole in it. The gas wants to go in to the lower pressure system. And same would happen if the sky was a vacuum. Because there isn't a tiny hole, there's no container at all! So, so do you want me to explain where you've gone wrong? I haven't gone wrong. Yeah? You're wrong. Your religion of a sky vacuum's wrong. I've just explained how it's wrong with a simple explanation based on a far less intense differential that we could create versus gas versus the vacuum here on Earth versus the 10 to the minus 17 tor that you've got when you've got a tiny little insignificant dot in an ever-expanding claim to be vacuum. Simple. What part of the atmosphere is a pressure gradient do you not understand? I do understand it, and I know it's the case. But you can't have gas pressure gradients or otherwise without something to press upon. If you claim it gradiates up to the top, I asked you at the beginning, what's it pressing on at the top? And your answer, because you're moronic, was it's pressing on a vacuum. Hello? <sighs> What's it Should pressing on at the top? Your answer, vacuum. You are moronic. Then I took the you through a little example of gas next to a vacuum. You said it was a straw man, which it isn't. Now we're here again with you sighing. The Everest. That is also not the air pressure 200 miles up, is it? Uh, sorry, Where'd you get you... gas pressure? Sorry, yeah. Where'd you get the gas pressure in the first place? You need a container. Yeah, not a giant void that could You're potentially not fill. You're listening to, to what press I'm saying. I am listening. What's it pressing on at the top? Vacuum. No, moron. 
that would be a violation of entropy. You can't have delta X before you have X, son. You're a schmuck. Delta X being gas pressure gradients. X being gas pressure. You don't get gas pressure gradients without first having gas pressure. And the necessary antecedent for gas pressure is something to press on. Is the top of Mount Everest still 760 tall? You still go back to the same thing, right? You can't have delta X before you have X. You're a schmuck. We're dealing with morons. Simple. You're not understanding what... Oh, uh, you're not understanding. That's or what you're is, deliberately which... trying to miss... Okay, miss which, which is X and which is delta X? Gas pressure gradient or gas pressure? Which is delta X and which is X? Stop trying to bring stupid terms into things. Oh, stupid terms. Stupid terms. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're not stupid. <laughs> it's not that I don't understand what you're asking me. They're just silly terms. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What's delta X in this example with gas pressure gradients? Which is X and which is delta X? I'm going to ask this for four more hours. Four more ask away. But it's clear that I've been Yeah, he's just, point. Point. he's just asked me to ask away. He's just asked me to ask away. You're giving me an example. He won't. He you Can you hear me now? Yeah. Well, hold on a second. He's got to answer yeah. this question. You're giving an example of gas okay. pressure gradients, and we want to know which is X and which is delta X. That's the question. Four more hours. Let's see if he can answer it. Go on. No, no, we're asking you. You've just told me they're stupid terms. You're trying to sidestep the point that I'm... Oh, that's not an answer to the question. Now, is it, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see if we can ask it again. In your hold your breath. Let's ask it again. You asked me to ask it you. Do you remember? We recorded it. Yeah, feel free. Ask away. I'm not going to answer it. But you That's because you're retarded and don't know the answer. Somebody who did know the answer would answer it like that. Do you want me to ask again? Fundy? Moron? Idiot? Buffoon? Which is X? Which is Delta X? It until I have accepted that you've understood the point that I'm trying to... Yeah, we do understand your point. Gas pressure gradient is and your point. Move on yeah, you your point, I'm trying to summarise, and you won't let me even summarise your point that you think we don't understand. Your point is gas pressure gradients exist. And the yes. atmosphere is such an... Uh, is that a no a or a yes? Is that your point or not? The thing that you're missing is that you're claiming, essentially, that there is a... Uh, sorry, this isn't about what we're claiming, you stupid dick. So we do understand what you're claiming. Now you're saying about what I'm claiming. No, no, we've summarised what you've just said. We don't understand that you're claiming, and we do. So, dick, we're going to ask you for four more hours in what you are claiming, that would be gas pressure gradients, which is X, which is delta X. Don't tell us these are stupid terms. Concede that you... Then in your projection of your own stupidity have told us that we don't understand them and that they're stupid because you don't understand them. I want to hear you tell us that the reason what? you've hand-waved them Nathan. is because you're stupid and don't understand them. Or explain what they are. Nathan, Go. tell me why your vacuum chamber example... That's the obfuscation. Projection again. He told me that I was obfuscating. No. I've told you. We're going to ask you this until you answer. Fundy moron. Tell thicko. me why your example doesn't match the atmosphere. We're asking which is X and which is Delta X. We're just getting nowhere because you don't understand what those terms mean, even though you told us. They're stupid terms. I'm not going to move on. Until I'm not moving on either. I'm asking you which is X <laughs> and which is Delta X until you concede that you actually don't know what these terms mean and which is which, even though you've hand-waved them and claimed they're an obfuscation based on the fact that you don't know what they mean. Four more hours. Four Over. more hours. Yeah, tell me again I don't understand them in their stupid terms. While I hold your toes to the fire, making everybody acutely aware that you don't understand these terms, and rather than admitting that, and having some humility, being a little bit humble, you've told me they're stupid terms and we don't understand them. And we don't understand your point that we summarise in about two seconds flat. Yeah, we do, mate. We're just obliterating you. For the audience's benefit. So you You're don't like our little clown. Way. You know that, right? <laughs> you don't get your that your vacuum amusement. chamber thing is a straw man. Well, we'll, we'll not get a straw to the man. vacuum chamber here in a second. You have to terms. answer this and question. And because I won't what answer your question about terms, and I'm what in the wrong. Is X? You invoked gas pressure gradients. So, what is delta X? What is X? And which comes first? Thanks.
We want to know that you like understand I said, this stuff. Really not, really not that hard of a question. I don't see why you can't just answer it and then we can just continue. Oh, I know. It's because he's a Yeah, but he doesn't understand. He, just yeah, he doesn't, doesn't understand these terms. Yeah, exactly. He's thick, but in the face of us who do understand these terms, using them to demolish his argument, he'll, rather than having humility and going, I really don't understand what that term means. What are you actually asking me? What, what do you mean, Delta X? He'll say, those are stupid terms. You don't understand my point. Because he's projecting his own stupidity onto us. He's thick as all shit, but he wants to make himself feel intelligent by hand waving off stuff he doesn't understand. Four more. Uh, which is X? Which is delta X? Talking about gas pressure oh, gradients. And which comes first? I'm still wondering how you form this in a heliocentric model anyway. anyway how do you get the beginning of the gas pressure to begin with in the heliocentric yeah, model? Yeah, we're not getting there yet. He's got to yeah. answer the question. But good point. Yeah, exactly. How would you get the gas in the first place? I have to say I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. I don't know what you mean. A bit of humility, Fundy. We know you're so caught up in your sphere belief and religion that you automatically assume, like the arrogant little prick you are, that you're right anyway. Like I said, I'm not answering your questions until you... Because you don't know the answer. What's X? What's Delta X? Your claim here is gas pressure gradients somehow overcome this argument. And we want an explanation of how that works. Our argument being you can't have Delta X without X. And in your claim, gas pressure gradients, we're actually actually asking you if you understand how we've demolished your argument now you just keep hand waving it but every time this goes round and round the people watching who do understand are laughing their tits off at you you fucking retard but you keep it up mate rather than saying actually yeah you're right it's blatantly obvious i don't understand what this is. maybe you could explain it to me i'm just not as smart as i thought with my sphere belief and my vacuum of the sky bundy moron idiot these are demonstrable facts, by the way, not ad hominins. You not conceding you don't understand these terms is you demonstrating those things that I've just described you have. Your idiocy. Yeah? So keep it up. Really? Four more hours. Four, Four more hours. Hey, Wardy. Hey, Wardy. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let him answer. Okay. Come off mute and share your pain. I, I still... There is no point in us moving on to the terms until you can accept that your vacuum chamber is not equal to what's going on in the atmosphere. We're, we'll get to the vacuum chamber, like I said, here in a few minutes. What is delta X? What is X and which comes first? Um, okay, fine. Delta X is a reference to the uncertainty of the value X. X comes first. <laughs> Okay, now your point of gas pressure gradients, which you invoked, is delta X. That's the change or gas pressure gradient. The X is gas pressure. So you have to explain why where gas pressure came from without a container first. Thanks. But there is a container. The container is gravity. Oh, no. <laughs> oh he's so quick to forget. Yeah, at the beginning, do you not remember when I started giving my example of the vacuum chamber at a far lesser differential that I gave you 200% Newtonian and, forgive me if I'm wrong, 200% Einsteinian in full effect for the example? Do you not remember me giving you those two like Christmas? This is why I didn't want to move on because you don't understand the difference between your example and the atmosphere. The oh, difference the is difference? scale and it matters. Oh, well, tell us. The pressure gradient exists over long distances. Gas pressure doesn't instantly even out unless you have a very small container. Uh, sorry, nobody claimed that we've got even pressure. We do have a gas pressure gradient. My, my address to that was, what's it pressing on at the top? So quickly we forget these questions, eh? Maybe you can answer that. Right, the yeah, answer to your question is it's not pressing on anything. There's Who's nothing hammering? for it to press on. Who's hammering? Well, you just said there was a gravity container. Show us this gravity container. I need a pick. 
9.8 meters per second squared. I need a the pick. thing that we observe all day, every day, every uh, time we, we drop need something. gravity container. Except you for said gravity was the container. Right. Wait, wait, so, wait. First of all, a, a rate, of, acceler a rate of acceleration in the container now? Hold on, chocolate. Really? Kiwi's in the middle of <laughs> literally talking. Yeah, I was right in the middle. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. He said, I'm now sorry. everyone heard him say that gravity was the container. So, it's easy. Show us the gravity container. Well, that's like that's like asking for an example of something that can't be seen. What? <laughs> 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 Sorry, hey, you mom. just told us 9.8 meters per second. We see this every day when we drop something. Yeah, okay, when we drop something. So, is air gas dropping? Hello? Is air dropping? The atmosphere is thicker, closer to sea level. That's not what I asked. I'll ask again. Try and pay attention. Is gas dropping? I'll give you a clue if you can't answer. In accordance with the laws of gravitation and thermodynamics, the gas pressure is what it is at the various levels it needs. The gas pressure? Well, pressure is the amount of pressure it places on a surface area. So what's the surface area at the top that it's pressing on? It's, it's the gravity container, Nathan. He already said it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, he just said that 9.8 metres per second when you drop something. That's what we observe all the time. And I asked if gas was dropping. That's the downward effect that we're seeing from what is commonly explained as gravity. Yeah. And Whether or I'm not you want to describe... Yeah, I asked if gas was dropping. That's the common effect. That's how we observe it, according to you. Is gas doing that? Is it dropping? I'll give you a clue by giving you an alternative. Or is it expanding in all directions? Which is it doing? Is it dropping or expanding in all directions to fill the available volume it has available to it? Which is it? Dropping or expanding in all directions to fill the available volume? Do you know which one it Both. is? Which is it? Do you know? Should we tell you? Dun, 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 it's dun, both. Dun, 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 dun. It's both. Why would it need... Nathan, Nathan, why would it need to drop anyway? Since all gas is created near the surface of the Earth, why would the gas need to drop? Good point. You appreciate that all of the gas cycles start at the surface and go up, right? Sure, if you want to make that claim, I'm not going to make that it's not that claim, it was talking about the school. Did. It's, uh, yeah, the hydrological cycle, for Dynamic example. System. The gases are going up, right? They go from the water that you see into invisible gas that you don't, and then go into clouds. I'm not making that shit up. That's definitely true. So, what do you mean they're going down? It seems like they're doing the opposite, given that they come from ground level and go up. So, no, Why they're not going down. But you haven't answered. Your time's up. I'll give you the answer. They're expanding in all directions. So what I want to know is, the gas pressure and at the then, top of your gradient, what's it pressing on at the top? Given that it's expanding in all directions and not dropping and applying an invisible force field to it. Yeah? <laughs> it's the gravity container. Conspiracy the Cats theory. did a great video on this. Ah, shut up. I'm asking you a question. What's it pressing on at the top, given that it's expanding in all directions and not dropping? Hello? What's it pressing on at the top again? The vacuum? Less pressure. It, it can't press on less pressure. If it's less pressure... This is the point. Right, this is the basics of thermodynamics. If it's less, it wants to disperse into it. It doesn't press on it, you stupid idiot. It disperses into that. You want me to repeat the question for the 17th time? What's it pressing on at the top, sunshine? Define the top, because in... Oh, the top of the gas pressure gradient you're appealing to. The top of the pressure gradient is the same as the pressure of the vacuum of space. No, it's not, my friend. It's the gas pressure. Beyond it is no, the vacuum is. of space. That's the misconception that you have. Oh, it's a misconception, is it? So you think there's a demarcation line? Oh, and that's not how it works. What's it pressing on? What's the demarcation line? 
There isn't one. There's oh yes, there is, my friend. The Carmen line. Sorry, the whole. Thing uh, is sorry, not how it works. Yeah, there is the Carmen line. The Carmen line is what science reasonably explains as being the end of what we consider an amount of atmosphere. Oh really? So what? You just lied and ignored that. So there is a demarcation line, and is that something to press on? No. Oh right. Well, then the gas would fill the space, then. It's a level of pressure. That's yeah. it. And gas pressure, expanding in all directions, will fill the available volume. Hello? Hello? Gas at pressure will fill the available volume. Unless acted on by a force, uh, according sorry, to Newton's just laws this? of mass. Sorry, what? Force, number one. And number two, I've already said you can have them. They're not stopping gases from expanding Gravity. in all directions. They're not causing it to drop it. They're expanding in all gravity. directions regardless of gravity. So they're still expanding up. They're not dropping and conforming to any downward force because they're starting at ground level and going up. So this isn't anything to do with gravity. Gas law irrespective of gravity will still expand in all directions and fill the available volume. So, unless it's got something to press upon, it's going to expand in all directions and fill the volume available. In this instance, the sky vacuum would be the available volume. Yeah, and gas expands according to the laws of thermodynamics. No, the laws of thermodynamics would dictate that the gas would instantaneously fill the volume that it has available. Now, the fact that it hasn't instantaneously dispersed into a never-ending vacuum would debunk the notion that the sky is a vacuum. It isn't, because we have gas pressure. If the sky was a vacuum, then the gas would fill it. Well done, you're making an inc incorrect assumption. What? An incorrect assumption? No, it's called the second law of thermodynamics. It's not an assumption, it's a natural law. And so is gravity. <laughs> no, gravity is definitely not a law. Oh, sorry, you're about a hundred years out of date. Well done, you're cherry-picking the portions of science that Hello? you choose to believe in. Did you in. not just hear me? He seems to talk through every bit that demolishes. Gravity is not a law. That's about a hundred years. It's going to do it again. You don't like your incorrect assertions being corrected by flat earthers. It's obvious. But I will correct them. You are about a hundred years out of date. Not a law. Newton's law of gravitation is by definition a law. About a hundred years out of date. Superseded. Or to put it another way replaced i'll bet you he doesn't even know it what's newton's law of universal gravitation <laughs> should be fun it's been superseded by go. more accurate representation through relativity oh so you do appreciate that it's been superseded and is 100 years out of date and is no longer a law and is not a law it wasn't a law that's not correct and you're 100 years out of date you appreciate that then so not a law then like you just incorrectly asserted Incorrect. Yeah, laws are superseded, you knucklehead. Not, not a law, not <laughs> oh. a law, and not a force. Hello? So, he said a yeah, law so, was superseded. <laughs> so, yeah, so just to get back on track, so, yeah, I am using natural law. You're using garbage that's 100 years out of date to defend a natural law. That would be the second law of thermodynamics. Gravitation, not a law. So because the relativity stuff doesn't fall down anymore, is that what you're saying? Fall down? What, like the gas? Fall no, down, no, we're talking about stuff expanding in all directions. I know you're obsessed with stuff going down. The gas expands in all directions. We've gone over this. Gravitation still up. Say it, Fundy. Say it. Preach it. I believe in gravity. You can't just gravity. decide it doesn't apply because Einstein figured something new out on top of it. Oh, no, he didn't figure anything out. On top of it. You <laughs> he can't didn't... supersede the law, you knuckle. Yeah, he, did, he didn't figure shot. anything out. All right, let's just make that absolutely clear in this regard. He didn't figure anything out. He conceptualized a medium called space-time. It's not figuring anything out. 
The law is the effect. No, sorry. Law is not what we're talking about. Are you dumb? Are you dead? Are you stupid? Right. I, I, is it because we're flat earthers that you just automatically assume you can instantly ignore every word we say? Yeah? No. You're demonstrably wrong. Not a law. Hello? <laughs> Yeah, he's going to say the law is the effect and Einstein's theory is the cause. That's what he's <laughs> going to say. <laughs> the partial explanation. It's not complete. Oh, can I quote George Musa? <laughs> when asked if we have an explanation for gravity, do you know what his response was? He's an astrophysicist, by the way. He's an expert in this field. Do you know what his response was? We don't know what the cause is yet. He went, oh, no, <laughs> not at all. Well, that pisses in your face, doesn't it? That's an astrophysicist pissing in your face. If you, say no, so. you don't know the cause, then. It's not explaining cause, then. Yeah. John, you're a train wreck. Hello, Every hello. You're you wrong change. again. You, 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 this is a very embarrassing visit for you here. Sure, I'm wrong because you've chosen to cherry pick which pieces of science. Um, you uh, you have train wrecked yourself with every step, son. Yeah, it, just, it, it's really bad. This. Fundy, moron, has just asserted that we've got causes with Einstein. Quote, astrophysicist George Musa. Oh, no. We don't know the cause at all. <laughs> <laughs> how can something be a law without a cause? It's and how can a law be superseded? What? Why can the... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how can a natural law or be superseded? Can you tell us that? I, I want to know that. The law hasn't Please. been super. Yeah, Einsteinian. Oh, yeah, Einsteinian theories, and these are just colloquial theories. Let's make it clear, right? They're not scientific theories. They replaced Newtonian fantasies. They didn't. Yeah, they did. They replaced them. Yeah, superseded them. Replaced them. And there's a citation. Yes. You don't have to lie. Yeah, so, you can't have... Yeah, sorry. It's not the lights, son. How can a law be superseded or built upon? How can that happen? It can't, a natural law. and it hasn't. Natural law. natural law, yes. Go ahead. What I meant by superseded is that it's been superseded by a more accurate model, but the law is still correct. <laughs> a model. Mass still attracts mass. That's <laughs> the key element of it. The law is still correct. We just have a, a more accurate way of modeling it. Oh, modeling it. What type of model is that? Is that a runway model? Is that an airplane like model? Is that a computer physics, model? Everything is, is, is it a scientific model? Kind of model. It's a mathematical explanation. No, mathematics doesn't explain. It only describes. Every step you take, sure. son, you're getting flamethrowed. <laughs> he doesn't know where he is. Nope. Does he know that Newton also feigned no hypothesis of gravity, but he also recognized that there had to be some mechanism that's causing things to occur? Does he recognize that as well, I wonder? I didn't hear a word of that. I said, did you realize that uh, Newton recognized that he feigned no hypothesis of gravity? And he also recognized that there had to be some mechanism that causes things to occur in, the, in his motion. So what is the mechanism that you're trying to describe? So the law is the observation of things happening in the way that they happen. Einstein's relativity was a partial explanation. But it's you don't explain laws. Theories don't explain laws, son. Okay, we got the second law of thermodynamics, right? Post the theory, the second law theory of thermodynamics that explains it. Oh, Jesus Christ. You bet. And don't take the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> Just, do you understand why? Yeah. A, a law is literally an observable phenomena. Where you <laughs> said the explanation was uh, relativity. Their scientific theories, even real ones, they never, ever explain laws. Because if they did, then it wouldn't be a law anymore. Wait a minute, though. If, if, the, law, if, if the law is the observation of what actually happens, it's, it's a, natural a law, right? science. It happens. 
Right. Laws don't go through there's no, scientific There's methods. no reason why you can't extend that with a theory which can, contains yeah, the cause right. and yeah. the explanation it's called for that coherency. Cause. You can't... Scientific theories, let me say it one more time for you. Scientific theories, even actual ones, never ever explain laws because laws are merely descriptions. It never happens. I'll give you an example. The second law of thermodynamics. Please provide the second law of thermodynamics theory that, that, that explains the second law. The second law is also an explanation. It, no, it's a law. It's, a, it's an explanation. So explanations talk about the hows and the whys. So please provide the theory of the cause of entropy. Why does heat flow from hot to cold? Go. I need a citation, too. Uh, entropy is not the flow of hot to cold. No, don't don't uh, save him, Zanik. What he's trying to illustrate to him is that laws don't go through the scientific method. If you're going to get causation, you're going to be putting it through that method. That's not what happens with laws. But his assertions make it seem like he's... Like Ted said, laws are the observation. The you theory don't... is the why. The theory is the cause. Theory, so you're saying scientific theories explain natural laws? Correct. Wrong. Ah! <laughs> it's totally incorrect. You People call. always mock what they don't understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the louder Play you laugh, the more you rain. clearly... Yeah, no, you don't understand yeah. it. Zanuck, you're a clown. Zanuck, dude. Okay, so provide Zanuck, the second law of thermodynamics theory, please. The cause of entropy. Why, why don't you first tell me uh, how yeah, entropy right. has anything to do with hot to cold? I want it. I want it too. Let's do that. I want Let's it. have a chuckle. Let's have a chuckle over that. Yeah, we're gonna. We're just asking you for something specific, Zanuck. I want it too because lots of people are discussing this off air at the moment. This is like the hot topic that's not even being talked about. So, what's the cause of entropy? Give me the scientific cause established through. Experimentation based on hypothesis. The cause of entropy is that it's impossible to be 100% efficient in any kind of thermodynamic system or energy and energy That's not a cause. energetic <laughs> cause. <laughs> That's so not a things, cause. Then. So as you use energy, the as you as you use energy, a portion That's of it is unavailable to do to redo work again. That's usable not a cause. work. So they That's say not entropy cause. means what that the usual energy in a system That's nice. goes That's down nice with time. That's a nice description. What causes that? Inefficiencies, on the system. In the, inefficiencies in the energy used. That's what causes that. And, and, say, and Nathan, he let me get, said... Let me get you right. Inefficiencies in the systems okay. used cause an increase in entropy. That's what you think. Correct. And he said... The hold on a second. Cost, yeah. Hold on a second, Nathan. He said, please explain how entropy is explained by heat flowing from hot to cold. It doesn't. Okay. You just not said it did. That was your explanation. Five minute physics, not a problem. Shut him up, Nathan. You freaking moron. The second law of thermodynamics places an observation of everyday life into a formal statement. Here it comes five minute physics. Heat flows spontaneously from a substance at a higher temperature to a substance at a lower temperature and does not flow spontaneously in the other direction. Say good. <clears throat> Turn out the lights on Zanuck. Party's over. They no, say that the second law of thermodynamics clown. That was the that second law of energy. Clown. That wasn't entropy. That wasn't entropy. What do you mean it wasn't entropy? Okay, my my coffee cup entropy cold is, is an entropy. Usable energy in a system going down with time, basically. <laughs> we'll make, let me give you an example, QE. Sorry to interrupt. My coffee right. sits on the side and gets cold. You're saying that's not entropy? Got nothing to do with temperature. It's about energy. Nobody was asking you, dipshit. <laughs> It has, to, it has to do with the usable energy of a system going down, in an isolated system going down with time. Isolated usable. system? Isolated system. What is isolated, isolated my system? coffee cup, eh? There are no isolated, isolated systems. System. Number isolated one. Number one. Energy. Number one. There are no isolated systems. Number two. My coffee cup is definitely not isolated, nor is it closed. So then entropy does not apply it's to it. an open system <laughs> next to a colder system. And I'm asking about that process, and your claim that that's not entropy, which seems that's absurd the system, now we've detailed it, even with it. the rumpus. No. 
So you're saying the second law only applies to systems that don't exist. Right? That's what there you're you saying. There you go. Then everything you talk about with sure does not is not valid. You're well, so you're saying too, because sir. no no, I want to address that as well. No. Using isolated systems to describe what will happen in open and closed systems is an oversimplification to describe the law. The fact that there aren't any isolated systems doesn't mean that the law doesn't hold true because it would be <laughs> pointless having it. You, you don't even know the law. What is the law? Tell me what the law is. What do you the mean law tell second, you what the, the law, law is? Third in. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, you've got me over a barrel. I couldn't concisely you don't, summarize. You don't I know what it is. Oh, hold on, let me just do it. I'll, I concede this. I'm no, I don't mind. Even after watching probably a hundred bloody hours of uh, lectures on the second law of thermodynamics, I couldn't concisely summarize it. And I've often I asked could. QE for help in that regard. I don't mind admitting it. It's not easy to concisely summarize. And that's good for you. We all we all should have that humble that humbleness that I you're can. showing. I can. I, 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 that's I'm why I'm handing over. over. Go ahead, QE. The second law of thermodynamics. Unfortunately, your friend QE doesn't have this. Can are you going to let me summarize I'll, I'll this? Shut thing? him up. He wouldn't let you do it. You can summarize the second law of thermodynamics very easily. All you have to say is all spontaneous processes produce an increase in the entropy of the universe. Game set match. Now, is that the second law? Yes. Or is that entropy? And how does entropy play a role in that second law? <laughs> is that entropy or is it the second law? You are a cloud, sir. How does entropy play a role in the second law? It's not the second law entropy isn't entropy. Entropy and the, by the second way. law are the same. It They're is the, the second law, you moron. What are you talking about? It is the second law. That is entropy. Really? Yeah. Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, I I'm posting something in Master B. You can maybe explain to him. Uh, entropy no, is an aspect of the second law. It's a component the of the entropy. second law. It's not the, the whole second law. The second law is describing entropy. Yeah. Entropy is the usable energy in a system going down with time. If entropy yeah. goes Citation, up, please. the energy goes down. Citation, please. It's yeah, basic, be, you know, otherwise described you know as an... Hold on. That would otherwise be described as an increase in entropy? Entropy. If energy goes down... Yeah, that would be an increase in entropy, wouldn't it? That yes. means the energy goes down, yes. Yeah, so we're talking about entropy then when we describe it with the second law. <laughs> the second law is about energy going from high to low, high temperatures yeah, moving to low Entropy to increase. Oh, you know high entropy to low increase, that's right. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. In the universe, is the universe a closed or an open system? Oh God! Listen to this monkey. Show me where the entropy, where entropy applies to a open system. Go find a citation for that. <laughs> it applies. Uh, okay, a coffee cup. <laughs> yeah, I've just um, given it okay, you. I did up. Nathan, yes, I put, I put it in Master B for you to check if you really want to check. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a second. If I he heat, says the, show if I heat entropy coffee, heat, in an open system. If I pour hold more coffee in it hold and on. I heat the coffee cup back up, did the entropy go down or up? Hold on a second. Is oh. the is the coffee cup an open system? Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. That smashes your <laughs> argument straight out of the there bat. Then it doesn't apply to open <laughs> systems, you say. Who is it that? Who is it that said this? I think it was Jem Panda. I, he had that little gambit, didn't he? <laughs> if you, Priceless. If you add, if you, to define an open system, Nathan. 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 Okay, I'll have a go. I'll have a go. A system that is not closed. As I. <laughs> is is it? Is a coffee cup open, closed, or isolated? Let me have a look. Here open. We go. Go, 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 go do <laughs> your open. Google search. Go, go, go do your Google search and tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. You're a clown, Millie. It's, it's no, an open you, system. You're uh, the clown. Come on. You're not a, answering it's, it's my, an open container. my it's questions. It's an open system, Stanek. And intelligence. Just you're just trying to make fun of people. It's a, it's a container. Stanek is an open system. It's, a, it's an open container. Okay, it's good. Got, so if an open system, does entropy apply to it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yes. Yeah, my coffee yeah. gets how, cold. Tell me how entropy applies to an open open system. The energy oh, can go cold. in and out. Coffee, hot cup of coffee to the material. surroundings. To cool surroundings. Silent? What? Yeah, really. So, go ahead. What, would you say silent? Energy can go no, in and out, no. and also matter can go in and out. So how can so how does entropy apply? If I can just add energy, energy and can matter. go in and out. 
I can keep on filling it up with coffee and I can keep on heating it up with an external source. Therefore, it's on not going to have entropy. Hold on, this is ice. Sorry. No, no, hey, mate. Hold on, we might have sold him short. Sorry, are you saying you've got a perpetual energy generating machine? Can I, can I get your <laughs> phone number? That's why entropy doesn't apply, Nathan, is what he's getting at. Well, because of the perpetual energy generator. No, not potential energy at all. Well, you just nothing said you could keep adding. You just I said you could keep potential energy said, if I keep on adding to it. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what you said. You can keep true. adding heat, right? Yeah, I, I can, can keep on adding heat. Quick. That means I'd have a perpe can, perpetual motion machine. That means our cars are perpetual quick, motion machines. We keep on putting gas in them and they keep on running. Saying, They're perpetual uh, motion machines. What, machine. what kind of laws are you entropy using here? I'm just waiting for him to get into the end of his Yeah, but when gas is wasting them... No, 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 he's being interrupted. Go ahead, Kiwi. Let me end this. Let me end this quick. He's saying that the second law of thermodynamics or the entropy laws doesn't apply to open systems. Dr. John Ross, Harvard scientist in chemical and engineering news states there are no known violations of the second law of thermodynamics ordinarily the second law is stated for closed systems but the second law applies equally well to open systems there is somehow associated with the field of far equilibrium phenomena the notion that the second law of thermodynamics fails for such systems it is important to make sure that that this error doesn't perpetuate itself. So we're stopping your error, Zanuck, from perpetuating itself. Thanks. Say entropy. Find entropy with an open system. You won't find it with any of your friggin' oh, PhD go. citations. You're go. Not, you're a knucklehead. I just gave you. I gave you a challenge. Find oh, entropy oh, in the open oh, system. Oh, blame entropy it on is the an aspect rain. of the second law. Yes. Entropy yes. is an aspect of the second Finale, law. It's Finale. not the second law. Second law of thermodynamics. It is not the it's second law entirely. The Otherwise, it calls just entropy. You clown. You can't just call it the second law. So, so, what, so, what, so, what, so what is it then, Zanuck? You don't know what you're talking about. What? You're toe tagged. Boom. Zanuck, what, slam what, dunk, what is it game then? Over. Yeah. Can, can you correct them? Can you correct them? What is it? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Entropy is the energy of a isolated system going <laughs> down with time. Entropy is not. <laughs> The second law of thermodynamics in its entirety. It's okay. an aspect entropy of it. No worries. Is, so he's it's quoted correctly of the on, second law. On. But you cannot quote entropy as being applicable for a, 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 a uh, open system. It does okay. not apply yeah, to I open system. It. Hold on, hold on. So you're saying it only applies to isolated systems? Correct. There you go. Nathan, okay, no the worries. Voice of hold on, I've got Thank a supplementary you. question. Can you show me that, please? I want to know why they've got yes. this description of this very specific system. Because obviously it's useful describing all these isolated systems that they need to I, examine. I think, I think you're missing it, Nathan. He's saying that the second law of thermodynamics and entropy are separate. Uh, that's just absurd. Yeah, an aspect no, no, of the other. Let, let's, let's not even misquote that's, him. That, he no, says no, that's it's not what an aspect saying. of the second law. No, no, that's not okay. what he's saying. That's not, the way, I know that's what he's saying. But the the part, way he's saying it. It is part. Hold on, Zanik. Zanik, hold on. The way he's saying it is by saying that it only applies to isolated systems. Entropy yeah, but does. he's saying that the second law and entropy are different. No, it's not. He's saying they're aspect. He's saying entropy is merely an aspect of, of the second yeah, law. Okay, so let me define the second law of thermodynamics of from the Wiki. Law. The second law of thermodynamics states that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time. You're... Done. Perfect. Finish. You don't even understand what you read. You read it, and then you don't. You laugh because oh you don't even God. understand what you're reading. Wow. Hold on. <laughs> no, 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 this is where I come in. You're Go hold on. Zanuck, hold on. Go ahead, Kiwi. Uh, not Kiwi. Uh, uh, Zanuck. Make your point. So it was literally in the sentence. Fuck. Task you now. Interrupting. You stated very clearly that entropy goes down with time. No, and no, no, no. Stop. stop. Kiwi, you hold on. Stop! He can't help himself. He, he can't help why himself. Why are you using entropy? Why you just said are entropy. you using entropy with the second law? You said it didn't have any association. I, I never said it didn't have any association at all. I said quite the opposite. I said it was an integral what did you part say? of you the second I'm law. I'm to tell you what. I'm fucking tired of you. I'm sick of you. No, your don't, shit. don't give up because you give up, you're giving yourself uh, a I just one. I just want to get into his conclusion. So, your point, you're saying, oh, don't you don't even read, read the words. Just because you don't know. Just because you're, you're ignorant about the second law, don't give up. Sir. 
You are a certifiable oh, demonstrator. Hold on, please. Just, just me and Zanik. Answer my question and Zanik. we can have a discussion about it. Zanik, your argument is purely that it only applies to isolated systems as described in that paragraph from Wiki, correct? Entropy does. Take your time, Zanik. He keeps on muting me. I'm muting Entropy you at all. only applies to an isolated system. The thermodynamics, right. the laws of thermodynamics. Okay, apply to thank you. I just needed a yes. So, it, given that it's describing only isolated systems, according to you, can you show me no. where they put this into application, given that it's described in universities across the plane, where they utilize this with the isolated systems that it only applies to? In other words, so it's like I'm finished. So I'm finished. In other words, me, okay, I'm sorry. I haven't Relax. finished. Can Relax. you shut your mouth? So, <laughs> show me an isolated system because this is all it's applicable to. So, there must be hundreds and thousands sure. of them for them to have such concern as it only applies to them. Show me one. Okay, in physics, there are things called absolute. They use absolute temperature, absolute pressure, and they use the second law of thermodynamics. Show as an as isolated as system. Hold on. Hold on. There, there isn't none that we can't show one that we have to our disposal here. There's none around. We can't no, show no, that. Not to, let me just clarify. I don't want one that's at your disposal. I'm saying given the fact that this is discussed in laboratories up and down the countries of our great plane, in universities all over, and you claim it's only specifically applicable to isolated systems, show me an isolated system. Because that's all it's applicable for, right? Show me absolute zero. Show me absolute zero, zero pressure. They don't exist. You are a Sorry, So you're saying crime. like absolute zero, the isolated systems that apparently this is only applicable for don't exist. Right. Bingo, you finally figured it out. You broke. Oh, well, right. if so they the don't exist, law, hold on, QE, 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 rumpus in me, QE. So, given that they don't exist, why would they only be applicable to something that doesn't exist? The laws are a description of the effect under ideal conditions. The ideal conditions are the systems that don't exist. <laughs> Sorry. People Dick always mock when Nobody was understand. asking you. I was asking. It's like Zanik. ideal gas law. <laughs> what? Same thing. Is there ideal gases? Are there ideal the gases? The second law applies to only systems that don't exist in nature. Don't exist. You, sir, you wow. people. Are what we're saying is, it most retarded. accurately applies absolute under ideal conditions. Yeah. So if it's You're describing, hold on. If it's only describing something that applies under ideal conditions, even though those don't exist. Why no. would you be using it? Most is accurately it so applies. Oh, right. So it most accurately applies to an ideal situation. There's just a margin of error in everything we do in science and in physics. Shut up, this Sanic. Is how, this is how we understand... Shut the fuck up. I'm tired of your mouth. He's wrong. You're a friggin' retard. So, so would it apply to other situations that are not ideal? Yes, just less with less accuracy. Oh, so in other words, it's not only applicable to isolated systems, but also applicable to open and closed systems, the systems that we do actually have then. Nathan, have you guys ever read the description of entropy? Yeah. Yeah, Silent <laughs> and I went over this a couple days ago. That, that's what it says. It, it says the measurement of, of things of things that non-existent. That's what it says, the definition. Yeah, Sam and I went over this a couple days ago. System. He gets it now. Yeah, that's my my point is that he's saying it is only applicable to the systems that are non-existent and aren't <laughs> ever going to be utilized, used, or have anything applicable to them ever. Now, if that was the case, there'd be universities up and down the land teaching the biology of unicorns. Most Here we go again. Accurately applies. Yeah. Most accurately applies to an ideal system, which would be an isolated system, even though we don't have any. So although it's oversimplified when using ideal situations, it is still applicable to both open and closed situations. It's just less simplistic to explain that way. So they use Did ideal the situations, including an isolated system. Well
You guys Do I have to bring my thermodynamic books out here and give you a, a, a first chapter review or no? You giving us a review on the second law of thermodynamics is tantamount to Elmer Fudd giving Tiger Woods a review on backswings. You, you sir, still think, are you still think gas is tried to find your entropy. Demonstrated retard, sir. Really? You. And you're the one that says, yeah. I quote, gas is always trying to find their entropy. Week. That's your quote. I'm going to have a whole Zanic. Zanic. I'm the clown. I'm the pretender clown. God damn. You wee, wee. A certifiable clown. You Zanic. freaking spinning hot tub Torpedo rambling. Arwen, come on. Zanic, does entropy exist? Is it a thing? Of course it's a thing. No, it's There's not. No, according, to you, well, according to you, no, it's not. So according well, to you, it's only applicable in isolated systems, and isolated systems don't exist. So according to you, entropy right. doesn't exist because it's only applicable in isolated systems, and they don't exist. So no, according to you, it doesn't exist. Right. Well, gas law so works on perfect yourself. ideal gases, right? Do they exist? He contradicts no, himself no, on every other statement. You no, know, he's appealing to ideal gas law. No, there are no ideal gas. The same principles apply. Sure. That's why. Do why, keep why does he appealing to things that don't exist? exist? What's the matter with you, Zanik? Sounds why like does scientific. The why does the ideal gas law them? exist if they don't exist? If the gas law, the gases but don't do exist. Do ideal themselves. gases exist? Of course, they exist. No, they really? don't. Show us an ideal gas. There are no ideal <laughs> gases. You're just so stupid. <laughs> it is in their ideology. <laughs> there are no <laughs> ideal gases. Thing. You're just wrong. There are no isolated it's systems. You're just wrong. In reality, They're scientific no idealists. Absolute ideal conditions with absolute certainty. What's yeah. so hard Show about us an standard? ideal gas. Not a noble gas. Show us an ideal gas. An uh, ideal what? gas would be potentially a container that only contains potentially. one single raw potentially. Energy. Gas is a container? Potentially. No, no. What Show the? us it. <laughs> Not, not theoretically, physically. We're talking about not, physics, not theory. I'm not saying that's the only way to explain it. I'm saying as an example. Not explain it. I had a container. He's deaf. Oh. He's deaf. Not explain it. Show it. Are you deaf? It doesn't he just exist. just explain how this doesn't uh, He is deaf. For the love of God. Not explain. Demonstrate. Show us an ideal gas. Yeah, well, you want to see, to, you said it, is, it exists it as a periodic table. It's shown this ideal gas. You want to know if it actually, can you see oh, it? Oh, here's touch Zanuck it? again. <laughs> here's Zanuck, trying to bail out his mate. <laughs> Point at it on the periodic no, I table. Said, yes. it, you're actually right. No, you're, you're right. An ideal gas does not exist, but... Ah, uh, right, there we go. Right, <laughs> no, you. so we can't be shown an ideal gas, but they still use ideal gas to explain how gas works. Real gas, actual gas, gas that does exist. So, Not presumably, gas. no gas law is ever going to be applicable because there aren't any ideal gases. In the same yep. way, there aren't any isolated systems. Therefore, exactly. we can disregard entropy and we can disregard gas law because there are no isolated systems and there are no <laughs> ideal gases. Oh no, they just use it to explain how actual gases work. How actual systems like open systems and closed systems work. It's just yep. a simplification. It doesn't mean you can hand wave it because... There's isolated systems being used in the explanation. No, 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 Zanik. That's just a weasel move. They're baselines. They use them in science for Nathan. baseline, so you can make yes, your Arwen. calculations and predictions based I may on know an the ideal, ideal gas. gas law. Absolute oh. zero. Absolute zero. Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> oh, I got a phone call. I knew you were going to say that. Oh, too, God. <laughs> Suddenly become audio chaos. Who's it's got a mental phone hospital? Call Telling him he's got to go back. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, you can't disregard the law of entropy. Second law of thermodynamics, that would be. Just because it's using a... Oh, could I get rumpus every time I try and make a agree. concise point? Yes, yeah. nice rumpus, just sorry. You can't just disregard entropy, otherwise known as the I'm second law of thermodynamics, simply because they are using ideal circumstances to, to describe it simplistically. That would be isolated systems. 
There are no isolated systems, but they're used to describe other systems simply because it's a simplistic way of doing it. Likewise, you describe gases with gas law, even though the description's using ideal gas and there is no such thing. It doesn't mean you get to hand wave gas law. It doesn't mean you get to hand wave the second law of thermodynamics. These are natural laws we're talking about and they do apply to a coffee cup. Correct. The people who would assert such nonsense like Zanuck are just moronic. Right. Yeah, if, if you got a concept, uh, that no still doesn't mean anything until you actually give a demonstration in the real world. Does the law of entropy apply Ren to a entropy? coffee cup? I can. I can give an, an open uh, demonstration. <laughs> you said it doesn't apply to open systems. Does the law right, I, apply to a right. coffee it doesn't cup or not? To, it, it doesn't does apply. apply to open systems. Oh, right, it so can't. it does apply then. You can't hand wave it because it's only applicable to isolated systems, as you declared earlier. Then well, I didn't say I didn't so hand wave it. So your cup of coffee it it gets hotter to... as you leave it out for any length of time. It gets hotter and hotter. No, it gets colder. Entropy increases. If I if Wait, I had a refrigerator in a room a plugged into the outside, and I open that refrigerator up, what would happen to the temperature in that room? Sorry, is that what? an is that an open system? The refrigerator with an open door. No, closed system with a plug. Well, actually, it's a open system. Um, I mean, a closed well, that undoes your <laughs> argument. You you just said it doesn't apply to wow. open systems, only to isolated systems, Anik. So what? You've just tripped up and undone your own argument, room, my friend. Plug it in a wall. Open the refrigerator. What happens to the temperature in the room? But there's a plug, it becomes an open Nathan. system. It instantaneously plug, undoes your argument because then it's an open system, which is something you say this doesn't apply to. Closed system, energy can enter. Oh. Not closed. You open the fridge in your example. You, you, what, we're immediately closing it again. Yeah, you slam that door closed as it demolishes your own arguments on it. You slam it. Room. Slam it. Quick, make it in closed again. But there's a plug, Hello, Nathan. You forgot the, the room. plug. <laughs> what if it was in a closed-off room <laughs> and you didn't know whether Wait, it was open or closed? Room? Would it be in a quantum state of being open and closed at the same time? <laughs> oh, here we go. Schrodinger's cat. It's never open. Sorry. <laughs> Ah, when you bugger. Don't, I was just about to round out. You've opened a whole can of worms. <laughs> no, I haven't. A can of worms. Well, can's open. I can Not you. A can, 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 can of worms is an isolated system. Can of worms isn't an isolated system. It's a closed yeah. system. Yeah. There are no funny? isolated systems. It's closed. That can of worms. Right. Until you open it. <laughs> What's, so let's go back. What's the point of all this? <laughs> oh, okay. So no worries. I'll, I'll summarize that. You see... The sky is asserted to be a vacuum, and we have this law of nature, entropy. Now, entropy increase would be what you would observe instantaneously taking place if the sky was a vacuum. You see, the gas, which is trying to expand in all directions as per gas law, would want to fill the available volume that it has available to it. As per the second law of thermodynamics, entropy would increase. The gas would fill the space. But you fundies think that by using delta x, a gas pressure gradient, that somehow defies the second law of thermodynamics. And why do you think this? Well, because you've got a fundamentalist religious belief in a sky vacuum. That's the only reason. The higher you go, the yep. lower the energy what, state of the delta gas. X? Oh, lots of mumblings from the fundies. One at a time, fundies. Well, x, x still requires a container, so delta x will require a container even more <laughs> even more so, so well equally at least so yes. arwen do we live in a do we live in a container yes we do okay and that's giving us what principle of our atmosphere that you are claiming here gas, gas pressure. Pressure. pressure gas pressure well gas pressure. the principle gas that pressure. i'm claiming is that there is a very specific limited amount of volume within this realm okay so we have a container and the atmosphere is contained, and that's why we have a pressure gradient. Tell me how those two are related. No, that's why we have pressure. Right, and yeah. in order pressure for pressure, to, pressure gradient to manifest, there has to be gas pressure first. That's so what if the I delta. put air into air, yeah, air the into delta X and, and the X mean. Do that's exactly pressure? right. And tell them again, Arwen. Right, so the, the X stands QA? for gas pressure, and delta X stands for the gradient within the gas pressure. So gas pressure requires a limited amount of volume in order to yeah, balance out and not dissipate 
purely okay. into nothing. All right, so you have a container. And a gradient and you, that container, uh, does no, no, hold on, the let me same finish. thing. So you may have a container and you made the container smaller, reducing the volume, therefore increasing the pressure. Still, why do we have a pressure gradient then? Because yeah, why is it, we have why a is it greater dynamic, dynamic surface? Because why does that I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. Because we have a closed dynamic system as opposed to a closed static system. A closed dynamic system. So we have That's a closed right. dynamic system. That's why you're saying we have less pressure at the top near the edge of the container than the bottom near the surface of the earth. That's your explanation. Yes. Because yeah, all like, gas like is generated from the sand, ground up, uh, mud, and water. Well, now, now we're now silence telling us this because they start at the bottom and they go up, and that's why they're denser at the bottom. These are great explanations. I hope someone has some actual logic behind them. Logic. We learned about the nitrogen cycle, the CO two cycle, and the hydrologic cycle in primary school. Right. Okay. So tell me, give me a quick high level of the CO two. It has cycle. nothing to do with logic. That's not why a does, syllogism, is that's just reality. Why is CO2, you even know why what is a CO2 syllogism evenly is? distributed from the surface you of the even, earth all the way to... You said logically. Long. Why would you ask me logically? What's the syllogism? What's Do you even what? know what a syllogism is? <laughs> What's the, the I'm sorry, I, you were cutting out. Why would you ask me something radius. logical about reality? Why wow, would you that's ask a, me that, that's you a great question. You clown. So we have, have you, we have a container. So we have a pressure gradient. Why do we have a pressure gradient? What? Why do I just explained it to you? What are you going to you that. Me the, volume, the volume, the volume exists, and then we just close the container. You need a closed container for gas pressure. Remember delta x and x. Okay. So we have the container. If the we have universe to make the was infinitely uh, large, then the, the gradient hold on, would not hold on. even be measured. Hold on, Owen. Hold on. Go ahead, Sonny. My question is. What raised the pressure? What what made us have pressure? A container doesn't alone give us pressure. Well, gas. <laughs> Why? The volume had to be decreased. How did the volume decrease to give us pressure? It's it's not the and sole why antecedent. It, why did it, uh, let me answer. Equally? Let me answer. It's not the sole antecedent. It's the necessary antecedent. So yes, you would also okay, need so yeah, gas. Necessary. Yeah, necessary. necessary yes, yes. Gas. necessary to have gas so, pressure. You can't just have gas. So how did that happen? How did you <sighs> reduce the volume in our atmosphere to increase the pressure? I don't but know why are we going is. to reduce volume? Don't need. We're not you applying Boyle's law. You had, you all we need you had is have volume. A container, and the volume it's had to be in volume. Is volume. I'm pretty sure the atmospheric volume, you know, the volume of the realm is pretty much set. Don't think you can change okay. that. So why do we have pressure then? What started the pressure? Because container. there's gas within <laughs> it. Gas. I put I put gas in a container. I close the lid. There's no pressure in the container. Yeah, there is. <laughs> How are you? Know? What? Then oh we God. just enter. <laughs> he got off the reservation. Oh, wait, wait, Zanny, Zanny, you <laughs> just you you just said you put gas in the container. You close the container. There's no pressure in there. Relative no, pressure. No, there's no differential pressure. Re oh, relative There's pressure no yes. of what? Remember high pressure, low pressure, second law of thermodynamics? Yes. No Rel relative you pressure of what? Pressure. You clown show. Yeah, you said you if you put gas in a container, there's no pressure. That's what, what? you said. Nah, he meant pressure right. differential. I don't care what, what he meant. <laughs> it seems like we're like a yeah. test bench for these lame arguments. It started with Spurs and David Dallas. But when you take these fundies through the logical steps of assuming the sky is a vacuum... They end up asserting we don't have gas pressure. The That's second the end law result. of thermodynamics is... It's not entropy, right? <laughs> <laughs> if there's no <laughs> pressure, you there's no pressure. You said you're an expert there in entropy. There can be a pressure differential, pressure differential without pressure. Huh. Okay. Have you guys signs? seen that they sell, like, uh, cans of air from some other places? Stuff like that? Yeah, it's that. compressed air. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I, I literally just oh, used just one at work, like a half hour. Hawaii. So, you have Hawaii, yeah. a jar of Hawaii air. I, I, I know. Yeah, 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 exactly. They do, they sell that stuff. Okay, so listen. So where where are you going with that? Yeah. We, have, we have a closed empire you open of space the jar. Also you let air in. You close the jar. There's no absolute. The, the pressure is not. There's no pressure differential. There's no. Listen, no, there's no, there's the air is not the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. no pressure <laughs> differential. Yes, that's right. There's no pressure differential. But to have a pressure differential, you'd need gas pressure in the first place 
for it to be different, wouldn't you now? So we've definitely got pressure in there. Gas pressure. It's just not different to the air outside. It's still pressure though, isn't it, Zanny? It's pressure outside, pressure in the... Yeah, it's pressure, yeah pressure outside, outside. You know pressure inside, pressure. 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 So this required. nonsense end result of people like you and Spurs and David Dallas saying that we don't have pressure because that's the only way you can get around this argument. The argument being against the natural law. Yeah? The only way around that natural law is saying, well, we don't have the very thing that is violating that law then. We don't have pressure. <laughs> if we, okay, let me back, hey, Nathan, let me try it at a different angle. So if we have an, an absolute, we talked about this with, uh, with Spurs a while back. So if okay. we have an absolute pressure in our atmosphere, right? We're 14.7 14 14 PSI, absolute pressure, sitting there in your room right now, right? Yeah. And we open that jar, we have a jar, and it's open, and we kind of scoop the air around us, and we put the lid on the jar. What's the pressure inside that container? 14.7. And what's the, what's the pressure outside of the container? 14.7. So there's no differential pressure. No. So your no, second law of there's third... There's no pressure differential. Oh, but let me be pedantic. Let me be pedantic. Definitely yes, there pressure, is. though. Definitely bit. pressure. There's pressure. There's pressure. There's pressure but now, there's now I've sound. answered you, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question, ocean, please? Can I ask Sanic a question? Can I ask, can no ask a quick question? There's no pressure. We all agree. Uh, can I ask Sanic a question now that I've just right? answered his? So, Sanic. Where did that pressure yeah, so come asking, from in the first place? So what I was thinking, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, can you shut up? Where did that pressure come from in the first place? Given that we've established that inside the jar there's pressure, outside the jar there's pressure, there's pressure. Where does that pressure come from in the first place? You ask me a question and I'll answer it. The pressure comes from the weight of the air above you. <laughs> and uh, Oh my God, oh, no, he's, he's going to give no, us the inverted pyramid. Uh, hold on. Right. So, at the top, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the top, right? The very toppermost <laughs> pressure. Yeah. What's what's above that? What's, what's the <laughs> Here we go you again. Said it's a dome. It is a container. It's a you container. So a... Xanix oh. just said above. Oh. We've got Did a container. A dome? What the fuck? <laughs> we've got a container, have we then, Xanix? A container. What? But so we have got a container. Really? Xanix now saying Wait. we've got a container. According to your fundamentalist religious belief in a sphere Earth. It would be an open system. That there isn't a container at the top in your fundamentalist sphere belief, right. though, is the Zanik? Right. Are you, the are you really it's sure it isn't just it a slightly matter. thinner we layer, layer pushing on top of the Zanik, so he's going to ruin it. Are we? The column of air above you. The weight of the air. Yeah, and I said at the top, you know, yes. where the vacuum is. What? What's the? Uh, what's above that? What's the weight of the vacuum? Nothing. Nothing. Oh well, then there's no <laughs> weight of the air above it then. <laughs> There is no weight at the air above it. going lower and down. lower, Nathan. It okay, sounds like a pyramid. The other thing we is... Measure, this, we the measure other, 0.16 PSI. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, let me get a word in. The other thing is, Zanik, yeah, when you're saying down, gas isn't going down. It's starting at the ground level and going up, and gas expands in all directions. So this whole down nonsense doesn't really make much sense. Don't really understand it. You, nevertheless, you understand if you'd let me. nevertheless, I know you think that the stuff above it's pressing down, but in your reification of a sphere world with a sky vacuum, there isn't anything above. There's a vacuum. So nothing's pressing down. Well, that doesn't work because the gas wants to expand in all directions to fill the available volume. Yeah. Unless having a, it's like, has a, it's like a pyramid it. scheme, and you find out that at the top, suddenly everything gets sucked away. Why would it get sucked away if there's if if the air has because weight there's nothing pushing on top of it, so it's gonna escape. Why would if it has weight? It's not see, because gas pressure expands within that, the that, container. It has oh, available oh, to oh, it, which oh, in oh, this case, oh, in your oh, presumption, is the oh, entire oh, outer space universe. Arwen. That doesn't work if you have a force acting on it. Yes, it would fly away if there was no force acting <laughs> on it. Yeah. Really? And here we okay. go. No worries. So what, how is what, it what, what the is that guided oh, by the oh, zoomed oh. gravity force pushing that air down onto know, the ball? I don't know what the force is caused by. It just, wait, is, wait, wait. It just is. There is a force. It's yeah, weight. Yeah. Right? Zanik, what force wait, everything are we talking weight. about? What, what? Everything has weight. Air has weight. You have weight. I have weight. We all have weight together. But a vacuum doesn't. Okay. So how is that? So the air has weight, it presses down. Now see. Uh, no, he just asserted air has weight, it presses down. 
And that flies in the face of what I've just said. It's like he's just ignored. You me. give me the, the second That's list. Expands in all directions. This is not a force of the magnitude not listening. or a vector. Um, Number one. Do you have it. another list? It's not going down. It's starting it? at ground level. Well, I get rubbished by my own panel. It's this? not going oh, down. Oh. It's going up. Hey, scalar. So one word. Look it up. Pressure is good? scalar. It doesn't have a vector on Chocolate. it. Not pressing Chocolate. Down can you go on mute? Hey, what it not, right? no. Chocolate. Not pressing down on you, though. Chocolate. Can you go on Chocolate. mute? Chocolate. Thank you. Everything has a weight. Sorry. The weight goes down. Just like you step on a scale. Really? Well, so what's gas. your vector, Victor? What's, what's, what's the weight of gas on a scale? Depends how much of it. Well, it weighs about two, 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 uh, two kilos per cubic meter on a scale. Okay, I've just put a you scale on the floor and it doesn't seem to be registering anything. What's going on? You got to weigh it. You want to weigh it? You got to get a different... You want to weigh it? Put air in a, in a box and weigh it. What? In a box? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what? Hold on. So we need a container? To weigh it? Yeah, how are you? Well, well, you're applying something that needs to be weighed, this force of gravity. So where's the container in your funny hey, sky Nathan, vacuum you belief? Works, Sorry, your example immediately needed a container. And I'm asking you that given that you're asserting that that's the case with air, and you've got to put it in a box... So presumably your sky vacuum's immediately overcome by that problem because you don't have a box no, around it. Not at all. Not at all, actually. Because you remember, we already talked about this. The differential pressure is zero. So the same pressure outside the box is inside the box. We can weigh it. Net, net for zero. So how is that zero pressure forming the edge of the container? That box. How is there a zero the pressure? Edge? Edge of the how is there a zero Pressure. How does zero pressure, pressure exert pressure like the walls of a container? It doesn't. No, the, we already agree there's an absolute pressure outside the box of 14.7 and inside the box of 14.7. We're talking about the top. The top of your fundamentalist religious belief in a sky vacuum. There's a point where you have gas at pressure that's not filling the available volume. We all measure that. Not we all have seen how that's just done. talking through everything I say. Every demolition of what he says... They just talk through these days. They don't even listen anymore. Hey, He's just talking non-stop, not listening to a single word I say. Talking across each other. You're not yeah, I know. Talking He's talking through me. Time. I'm asking about the top. He's talking about a box at ground level. We're talking about where the vacuum of yeah, the sky is supposed to believe. It. And when I get to that point, he starts talking. Yeah, so we're not talking through each other. He's talking over me. So, without oh. interruption from Zanik, which immediately starts the moment I start repeating myself, of course. At the top, Zanik, the bit where you claim the thing that's giving it pressure, because apparently it's got weight going down, down, even though it's starting at the ground and going up and expanding in all directions, you're saying the stuff above it that presses down, and there isn't in your fundy belief in a sky vacuum. There's a giant never-ending void. It's not pressing down, down on it, the stuff that's going up that contradicts everything you're claiming. So what's it pressing on at the top? There's nothing to press on. That defeats your argument in regards to a sky vacuum. The sky is not a vacuum because if it was, the gas we breathe, which is expanding in all directions, going up from ground level towards that empty space, would fill it. So there's no sky true, vacuum. That's not true. That's why we have a gradient. This dick with his gradient argument which one's Delta X, Dick? <laughs> uh, Nathan, you cracked me up. <laughs> dick. <laughs> Which one's Delta X? We already said the reason why... I'm not asking you, Zanik. I'm asking the guy that just decided to bat for you. Decided to push okay. you out of the way. Off and go, hey, we've got a gas pressure gradient. Which comes first? Gas pressure or gas pressure gradient? Neither. Gravity. Talking about... There's, no, there's never going to be a demonstration of gravity <laughs> maintaining <laughs> gas pressure next to a vacuum. Because well, he said gravity came first, but where exactly? We have Joe, a was, that, was that part where, of the choice? Where does choices? gravity come in? Like, Wait a second. He asked him a two-choice question. You can't bring a third choice in. Which comes first, gas pressure Sorry, gradients or gas pressure? Don't say weebles. 
because the I, answer I, is I'm not... still not sure how the bending of space time is even supposed to gather all this matter or, and all right, that. Right, but that wasn't it's not a force. Let him... <laughs> right, but that wasn't the question. Nathan Whoa, asked let's just, him, let's say there's a which force comes... Let's don't get on the cause of what causes which things. Which comes first, down. gas pressure gradients or gas pressure? Which comes first, delta X or X? We've circle. We completely circled around. Right back to the beginning again. And how do we generate pressure? We apply a force to something. So no, where does that you force have a container. Come? Answer is question. You have a container. Which comes? Which comes first, please? Yeah. Gas pressure force, gradient or gas don't make pressure? A force. Which comes first, clowns? Can't you listen and answer a simple question? That's how retarded you are. Which comes first? I'm going to say it this you last time. You have a time. large mass. Which comes you have first? have a large mass. It attracts gas. gas. You can't that even let me finish. Pressure. The clown that didn't triggered. answer it last time is the one rumpusing you. The clown that didn't know what Delta X even was last time. That's the one that's interrupting you while well, you ask the question. I answered that question, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> So which comes right. first? I'm pretty sure he answered gas pressure early on. Right. So to have gas pressure gradients, you first got to have gas pressure. And you can't have gas pressure without a container. Right. And gravity acts as a container. Show me. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> show us. Holy back God. back so again. This is a circle jerk. Back again. Show us the gravity container. No, show I us. want to know what is what is the the volume factor on gravity, since it causes. What do you, a what do you mean? What is the volume factor on gravity? We need v. No. How, how does it work? We need v. Oh, we want to see the you gravity know? container. What does that mean? Or what does that even mean? Well, a I don't container. That a container is defined by its volume. So right. how does gravity, gravity cause that? Gravity okay, let's, let's, what let's, they do, let's do a, a quick thought experiment. Gravity you know, if you have a container, Zanuck, it matters. Hold on, can I say something? He didn't you guys have been talking for the last half you hour. Cannot. Gravity container, please. Who said <laughs> gravity container? The other guy. Who is he? I'm very quiet. I think his name is The Wordy. Yeah, yeah. The so wordy? gravity applies a force to mass. Gas what? is mass. A force? Yeah. So Ow. you're saying gravity acts as a container. Show us. Look out your window. There's oh, a so you've got to appeal to your religious <laughs> yeah, 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 sky wow. vacuum. No, no, this is the fairly typical standard answer from a fundy zealot. What proves that you can have gas pressure without a container? What violates this natural law? Oh, my fundamentalist religious belief in a sky vacuum. That's what proves it. He do didn't we, even tell us to walk outside, just looking out of the window. Gradient. They're getting lazier. Yeah, I'm looking out my window. I don't see a gravi gravity container. I'm looking right out there. It's sun shining. Honey, where's the gravity uh, container? Well, she said I also see nothing going down either. Well, he's somewhere <laughs> well, over there. I definitely can't see no crystal dome as described in the Bible. So, oh, we don't really? claim the sky is a vacuum, though, do we? What? We don't How claim the sky a is a violation like? of a natural law, do we? We we're not claiming the sky is a vacuum. I don't claim to know what the sky is at all, but you but seem to think it's a vacuum. Which flies in the face of a natural You're law. Claiming there no, but has to hold be a, on, Nathan. He said it doesn't look like a crystal dome. So how does a crystal dome look like from it within? Cares. Could it maybe look very clear? Right. There's, there's there's two people in this conversation, right? This dude who's saying the sky is a vacuum, and me, who's not making a claim about the sky. The atmosphere is observably True to be a gradient. <laughs> He's back to the gradient. Really? Again. Well, okay. Uh -huh. So, oh, hold on, hold on. That's a claim. So, demonstrate what it is to me at four million miles. Oh. You're, you're asking. Look, at sea level, it's one pressure. Did, did I ask what it was at sea level? <laughs> Are you deaf? 
You just made a positive claim. Now you're going to back it. Or you're going to fail to back it miserably man. but and immediately go to sea level. You're trying to straw man me. No. You've claimed that it's a gradient and you know that it's a gradient and that's the end of your argument. I'm asking for a specific height and what your proof of the gradation thereof is and you say it's a straw man. I'm not straw manning you. I'm literally asking you to back your claim. Right. I'm saying proof of that claim can be using a barometer at sea level, using a barometer at the top of Mount Everest. Uh, sorry. And, using a barometer and my question was, what is it at four million miles? Are you straw manning me and answering a different question now? Because that's not what I asked. That's observable factual evidence of a pressure gradient. And what's it like at four million miles? Yeah, what's your observation there? Yep. Well, the observation there is that clearly our atmosphere is a gradient. Depending yeah, on your altitude. Yeah, yeah. Clearly our an atmosphere is a gradient up to the top of Mount Everest, as you've described so far. And I'm asking for something beyond that, though, aren't I? You, you seem to be obfuscating this and reasserting what you claim based on logical extrapolation proves right. what's Based happening at four million miles but when i ask you how you've measured that with your barometer Nathan, you seem to tell me about be. taking measurements from somewhere else and then talk through me pointing out that you're not giving me what i'm asking for nathan you're doing the exact same thing by saying that there's a dome or there's some type of container uh, sorry do you want to put that shit in quotes oh, oh. do you want to put that in quotes <laughs> can, can you be. answer the question do you want to put that in quotes rc that's where I was going. Is you're claiming there's a dome. I'm not claiming anything. Oh, I told you once, you little shit. Did I tell you Nathan, don't make you, up you claims I haven't made? Where's RC Meister? He's going to get you're kicked out. You're saying there is some sort of container. Fast. What is it then? Just claimed I've said there's a dome. <laughs> you have said there is a container, Nathan. Yeah, All right, do you want to put it in quotes? You've just changed the words you've said I used. Only 20 seconds ago, you used the word dome. You're not putting in quotes. You're making stuff up I haven't me, said. Look, me, By definition, it must be a dome if the Earth is flat. No, it no, that's not true. Look, a dome is a what? container, but that doesn't mean that all containers are domes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's 100 percent true. Nathan, let me put this in quotes. You have claimed there is a container. You have never seen the container. That's not you a quote. This stupid retard doesn't even know what a quote is. Let me put it in quotes and then extrapolate my interpretation of words you may or may not have said after saying this is a quote. You don't even know what a quote is. So, Nathan, you have said there is a container. So, do you want to put that in quotes? Full quote. So, quote, did. there is quote. a container. End quote. That's what I've said, is it? Then give me a timestamp. Then take me to it. And then prove that you're not just making this shit up on the spot. Does anyone want to dispute that Nathan... I'm not talking not... to you. ...that there is a container? Sorry. The necessary antecedent to have gas pressure is a container. That is my claim. Now, the right, positive so... assertion from your side of the argument is that the sky is a vacuum. I make zero Nathan, assertions... Oh. ...while everybody else rustles and Discord rumpuses me... I make no assertions about the skies. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely know that you assert it's a vacuum. And you assert there's a container. That is I assert that, no, I assert the necessary antecedent to have gas pressure, which we have, is a container. That's a fact. So you just said there is a container. I said the necessary antecedent to have gas pressure is a container. That's what I said. You can't even repeat words you heard 20 seconds ago. So you're definitely not going to be quoting me then because you're quoting me out of context. My context being very meticulously picked in the words I use. The necessary antecedent to have gas pressure is a container. Not all kinds of gas pressure. Nathan, equal pressure everywhere. You know Don't interrupt me. No, that's not party. true. Hey, 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 you hey, can hey. have a gradient within a smaller hey. container as well. Right. If there's Let's different types the of gas. What the fuck is that? That was me, Arwin. What the fuck is that? Stop Repeat swearing, the please. antecedent. Uh, you know, th there's more than one way to get you? pressure. 
Right, let's get back to this guy. Go ahead. You, you don't need a container. You can Show get us. pressure through a yeah. fork. Show us. Beyond your <laughs> fundamentalist religious assertion about what the sky is, show us. Uh, I, I tried to argue that one once one time, okay? Uh, no matter the m amount of force you're going to apply to any kind of body, which would presumably be, for example, a very fast spinning centrifuge, you're not going to be able to create an actual vacuum, no matter the amount of force. It's just not possible. The only way to do it is to oh, literally that, pump oh, out gas out I've of a container. I just asked him to show us. But you can't prove the force anyway, so... So you're going to show us oh, this? Oh, in then? a centrifuge oh, again. No, it's just going to be an endless diatribe from my own side. I'm done. Unless you can, unless you can show a container, then it's logically more correct to say that space is a vacuum because there isn't... An <laughs> no, that would be a violation of a law of nature, not an acceptable logical extrapolation. No, there is absolutely no way, shape or form I would logically extract a vacuum of the sky ever because it flies in the face of the second law of thermodynamics. So no, your incorrect assertion isn't going to be a justifiable reason for your fundy belief in a sky vacuum. It's definitely not a logical extrapolation. If the sky was a giant void, the gas would fill the space. Have them post the syllogism, Nathan. <laughs> okay, that... The problem Post with the that is, is that you're making your logic. Uh, that the pound says he doesn't know what that word means. All space Let's see doesn't. if I'm right. Pound, who's yeah. taking, that he doesn't understand nothing, what that word means. Nothing about the globe okay, model says that about. that will happen. There's an assertion that you're making. Yes, we heard your claim. You. We heard. We that. heard. Now you're being asked for a syllogism. Do you know what that is? Oh, Jesus, Nathan. Fucking hell, man. That was the you reaction last time simple. when we asked for Delta X. I will take that as an automatic understanding on my part. That no, he doesn't understand what a syllogism is. Because, oh my God, Nathan. Yeah, that's what he did last time he didn't understand something. Just say no. I don't know what a syllogism is. Zero humility. Yep. None. He said it. Yep, he said it was a logical conclusion with his fairy tale sky vacuum. I want to see the syllogism. He doesn't even know what that is. He's just going to he's going to probably blaspheme and use my name. Syllogism, an instance of a form of reasoning in which a conclusion is drawn from two given or assumed propositions. A common or middle term is present in the two premises but not in the conclusion, which may be invalid. Outstanding Google. That was real quick. Okay, now put your sky vacuum in a syllogism. Why would I do that? Because, because you said it was a logical was conclusion, logical you conclusion. stupid idiot. You just said it was a logical conclusion, and the way you're going to describe that logical conclusion is with your premises formed in a syllogism. You stupid okay. idiot. Prove that the sky is full of mass entirely. <laughs> Sorry, the sky is not what we are <laughs> claiming. We are asking you for your syllogism based on a sky vacuum. Go. It's reasonable, deductive reasoning that because we have a gradient, there is a point at which there is very little in that in that uh, space. Because of a gradient, right? Yes. Okay. What comes first, gas pressure or gas pressure gradient? Oh, stop going around in blood. Yeah, because it destroys your logic. Your logic that you've just placed in a useless syllogism is undone by that question. Not going around in questions pointing out your flaws in your logic. Fact. The atmosphere is a gradient. Yeah, we know. Fact. And, and therefore, the sky is a vacuum. That's not a reasonable syllogism, my friend. That's illogical. If you go high enough, you're in a vacuum. Yeah, that's your fundamentalist religious assertion. That's not even a syllogism now, is it? Not even a logical or reasonable supposition. It's just no. your fundy belief now. <laughs> Say it, brother. <laughs> just praise your fundy belief. Say it like you believe it truly. Yeah, just asserting your fundy belief isn't going to give us a logical extrapolation Show or syllogism, me the, my the sky is a vacuum. It must be, must be. Spiritus. Yeah, Amen. you're fundy. All you're doing now is asserting your fundy belief, preaching it. 
How fundamentalist are you? You must feel like a sack of crap. I hope you listen back to this and appreciate just how big a fundy you are. You're a zealot. Not require there to be a physical container in the way that you describe. He just Googled a syllogism and he didn't give us us a syllogism. I know, he didn't give us one. Just this fundamentalist religious belief asserted as though it's a fact that we should accept because he declares it with such gusto really loud in his mic. The sky is a vacuum because it is... It's my syllogism. That the best What's the got, syllogism, Andy? clown show? So you've got no explanation, so you're just going to try <laughs> no, and so, straw match. So what? your syllogism is we got no explanation. Thanks. <laughs> no, we got an explanation. Okay, the necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a container. That's our explanation. As being in line with natural laws, yours being in violation of natural laws. If there's a container there, it should be easy. Which don't go through scientific method anyway. What about how we got the, atm- the atmosphere in the first place? <sighs> haven't even yeah, taken through a stab at the that. container. Uh, who said that? Through the container. Who said that? Who said that? Was that Rogers Force? Sounded like Rogers Travis. Force. Yeah. No, it's Travis. Travis, spot on. Right. X is the first requirement. Having gas pressure in the first instance. Not the gas pressure gradient he's appealing to. That would come after. That would be delta X. So yeah, where would he get the gas pressure in the first place? Where would he get X? That would be gas pressure. Yeah. Well, you'd need the necessary antecedent of a container. Mass. Simple gravity. I have an yeah, MSU Here we go. Answer. We've whipped around the drain. We're getting quicker and quicker. What's gravity? Quicker and quicker. He's the bending of space time and no force. No worries. Course. Let's test it. Let's ask him. For, I think it's the fourth time we've gone down this drain. Can you show us gravity maintaining gas pressure without a container, please? We should yes. make a yeah, flow chart. Exactly. Of he can. Hold on, arguments. Arwin. Yes. Let's see if he points to the sky and asserts his religious belief again. Nope. He's going to say, look out the window. <laughs> the atmosphere is clearly a pressure gradient and gravity pulls things down. Wow, it's going down the drain real quick this time. So you can't have delta X, a gas pressure gradient, without first having X, gas pressure. And you can't have gas pressure without a container so your appeals to delta x are undone by the necessary antecedent for x gravity produces x which here we go we've gone down real quick this time now show us gravity being maintained without uh, gas pressure being maintained by way of gravity without a container show us it's observable reality. Oh, Look my Fundy belief in sky vacuum <laughs> proves it. No, Fundy. That's not a demonstration. That's your fundamentalist it's making a, religious it's assertion. It's begging the question. Yeah. It's begging right, the question. That's what you're trying to in prove. A so you can't look out the window. You've got to prove it now. You clown. Show me gradient sure pressure in a... T- in I'm a sure he's Cox. Is this Brian Cox? <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian Cox it might sound, be. It sounds like him. It absolutely sounds like him. Burden of proof reversal. How about, uh, do you have a MSU answer? Show me a gradient pressure in a... Uh, in oh, a container. That's easy. oh, no worries. There's two examples. There's one on Good Times for All channel. These are ones that have been done within the community as opposed to a bazillion others that you could go out and seek out for your own volition. But done within our own community, we have Hillbilly Blue Balls with a gas pressure gradient created by butane in a pipe. And we also have Good Times for All doing it with varying degrees of temperature in a cylinder. So yeah, there are plenty of examples of gas pressure gradients, but they definitely needed the first antecedent, the necessary antecedent, that'd be container. We're asking you to show us it without that by way of gravity. You haven't done it yet. Just type, just type in "hillbilly blue balls" the redneck retard, and the video will pop up right in front of you. Probably not the redneck retard part, though, right? So you yeah, it's titled that way. I think. Container, so but you I can't show me up. a pressure gradient in a container. Yeah, we have. We just <laughs> me two examples. I can do yeah. that. I, I, I can tell can you one that. real quick. It's called an air conditioning. Seriously? Hey, I got one. Look same. out your window. Hey. No, no. In the presence of a force field, it will be a gradient pressure, a tiny one, but there is gradient, even if in a jar with a lid, okay? Here on Earth, you might think the pressure is equal on all the walls, but because of that fucking gravity, it's not. You think 
the gravity causes the pressure differentials. Man, I wonder what I've never, I've always like wondered why they didn't give us the gravitons in the weather forecast. <laughs> oh, it's because they don't exist. Um, what, what's gravity? <laughs> it's the bending of a conceptual <laughs> medium known as space-time that was created in the mind of a man called Einstein, reified by millions. But that conceptual medium that does not exist called space-time apparently bends because you can bend it like you can bend freedom. <laughs> and that bending of that con concept gives rise to a non-force force that you can think of as a force but isn't actually a force but you can treat it as a force even though there's no necessity to and many of the people who originally described it just completely disregard it even though it's attributed to them. So that non-force force that you can think of as a force is called gravity. There you go. Hope that's clear. Thanks, Nathan. How, how does that affect the uh, gas pressure? It, it doesn't. It's not a force. Oh, okay. I was just, I was just checking because somebody seems to think it does. Yeah, it keeps they're, not, they're yet to show us that. And it's been asked many times to demonstrate it, and has not so far. And we've been here how many how many hours now? Right. Four more hours. Four more hours. Four more hours. Four more hours. Everyone, give it. Four more hours. Blame it four on hours. the rain. Yeah, yeah. Four more hours. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. And of course, a massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley. I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!